Howdy, friends. Happy Thursday evening for yet another episode of our Forbidden Lands game. We've got the whole cast here, and we're going to jump right into it here in just a moment. But before we do, a couple quick plugs. One, don't forget this Sunday at 3 o'clock Eastern, we've got our live uh, running of the Good Scum, Scum and the Villainy uh, for the Star Wars. And also for you, those of you that may be watching on Facebook or watching on YouTube, hop over to Twitch so you can join us in the chat. We've got a bunch of people in there chatting already. Uh, we'd love to see you there. Now, I know some of you have already watched episode one and two. Uh, we will do a recap for those of you that haven't for episode three. But I also know for some of you, this is really your first time looking at the Forbidden Lands. It is a fantasy uh, setting, uh, very unique, low fantasy, but with magic and uh you know what? Instead of me describing it to you, let me introduce you to Raven's Land. Welcome to Raven Land. For 10 human generations, the blood mist, a red and ravenous haze that rose from the ground at night, devoured travelers. Few dared to venture outside after nightfall, and fewer still know for sure what lies beyond the horizon. The demonic mist that covered the lands for three centuries, draining the life out of anyone who dared wander too far from their village, has suddenly and inexplicably lifted. Restless souls are finally free to leave their homes and travel far and wide in the forbidden lands, looking for treasure and adventure. The brave sharpen their blades and prepare to leave. They cannot bear the oppressive weight of their homes and hearths any longer. Adventurers, treasure hunters, scoundrels, not heroes, far from it. But men and women who dare travel the land as they choose and make their mark on it, unbound by any fate or story set for them. They hunt for ancient treasures. They fight whomever gets in their way. They build a new world for themselves on the ruins of the old. They are the raiders of Ravenland, the Forbidden Lands. All right. So that gives you a little bit of a look and feel for Raven's Land, which many call the Forbidden Lands. And we've got our whole cast here. Uh, let's set the scene first, though. Uh, it is 7 a.m., on the fourth day of spring rise, it's Earth Day. And you guys have had a interesting few days. In fact, you just recently went over to the gamekeeper's uh, hut, discussed with him kind of what's happening with the disagreements between our dwarf who's not a dwarf and Miss Palmer, the uh, village elder. He gave you a little bit of background and everything that's happening. You stepped out into the courtyard. In the center, you see the old well there. It's got the bench surrounding it, the bucket that leads down. Activity, people are starting to get up. You start seeing people walking around, tending to their little gardens, and some of them have chicken coops and a pigsty here and there. And I'd be curious. Let's start with Osric. Osric, uh, what's going through your mind this lovely morning? I am thinking that although... You know, we are glad to have found this new village after 300 years in isolation. It's a complicated place. Uh, we got the dead walking at night. We've got this dwarf who isn't a dwarf fighting with uh, Miss Palmer. We've already been asked if we wish to involve ourselves in the local politics by maybe taking her out of the equation. And so... Um, it is a very complicated place. And fortunately, other than the political infighting, the dead walking situation seems to be under control. At least the formulas are followed. Uh, the locals do not seem to be in danger. And so we've decided to, to move on to look for uh, perhaps a less strange place to continue our maybe establish trade or something with those uh, other villages. So I'm thinking now of the road ahead, have we procured enough provisions? And uh, uh, I think we should leave before things get even more exciting in this village. 
Well, the camera's going to go over to our young sorcerer in his apron, uh, former blacksmith, uh, one of the younger people in the party, but not the youngest. Um, what is Aldrich thinking about? What are some significant events over the last couple of days for Aldrich? You know, Aldrich's feeling pretty good, honestly. Um, he's well fed. I mean, the beer in the town's amazing, so that's pretty nice. Um, he hasn't seen this these Walking Dead people everyone keeps talking about, but he believes his friends. So if they say there's Walking Dead, there's Walking Dead. It is what it is. They don't seem too fussed about it. I mean, only been mugged once, so this adventuring thing isn't nearly as hard as he thought it was going to be. <laughs> it's only it, all the hard stuff's over. So yeah. you, it's all downhill from here. You guys are fine. You guys are just going to coast through the rest of the adventures. Uh, let's uh, then have the camera swing over to the youngest member of our party. We're going to swing down a little bit lower, down to halfling, <laughs> halfling size. Um, after spending yesterday being called a child, how is Vasilla feeling this morning? Vasilla is on cloud nine, honestly. Like this whole um, maybe, maybe not assassinating Miss Palmer thing is, is honestly beyond her because she got her first chance to really shine and and to do her thing in front of new people. She's never met, you know, she's never had a new crowd before. And and she's just she's excited. Like this is this is great. This is this is interesting. This is new. Um, and she's ready to just like find more towns and, and do more things. And she's been composing, you know, the ballad, the, the ballad of Sten the Merciless in her head like <laughs> the whole time. So yeah, she's ready. Like, <laughs> so speaking of Sten the Merciless, our grumpy, <laughs> our grumpy, grumpy hunter, the camera comes over to him. We see him with his bow strapped over his back, uh, hood over his head. And uh, where does Sten? Well, when we, when we first came to this town, I figured that, you know, the folk in this village were, were weird because, you know, all, all, all folk outside of, uh, of Oak Hart are necessarily weird. Uh, then when the, the dwarf who hates dwarves uh, started talking about having us bump off the mayor, I upgraded that to thinking that the town was mad. Uh, and now that I see that they're actually dead walking in the street at night, I've concluded that it's actually the world that's gone mad. So I think the safest conclusion at this point is just to get away from people back to the wilderness where at least I know what, what goes on. And the, unless the deer start talking to me and dancing around Wittershins, I think. <laughs> <laughs> <You're right ahead. laughs> <laughs> All right. So as you guys stand in, you guys are standing in the courtyard, um, a nice steady morning breeze. It's roughly about, about 60 degrees out so it's good that you have a light jacket on uh very temperate uh normal morning for spring rise where are we headed um, well we 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 heard from the villagers that there's a village downstream so that would be east yep uh but it stands to reason that if you know perhaps if we keep along the the shores of the river you know, where there's water, there might be more settlements. So we could also head upstream if that's another it's another option we have. Well, let's do this. Let's go ahead and head over to the map. And we can see where we are here. I put a little yellow check marks on the hexes that you've gone before. Oh, nice. um, so, so I'm imagining the, country. the four of you uh, really have a, if you're going to stick to the river you're at a junction down river goes south as well as east oh and then up river heads west well i reckon either south or east will take us to some kind of bigger body of water as lake or a sea or something that this lake that this river flows into and we've been told there's a village uh to the east at least one so that'd be my vote uh, that would be the safest route. Hey, Craig. Yes. When um the halfling when the halfling people came to Oakheart, I was very very young. Correct. What I remember or what I have been told, what direction they came from? They said that they came from the far south, um, and that that they okay. had they had traveled from the far south, and uh, essentially your village, your halfling village, it, all of all of the 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 land went fallow you could not gr grow anymore the hunting got slim mm -hmm. and 
things got desperate and uh, you figured, you know what? We're going to leave. This is no longer our home. We're going to head out and take our take our chances because if we stay here, we're going to die. And they headed north. And uh, it took several, several days of travel. And what was shocking is that wherever you set up camp, um, when I say you, I mean your parents and mm-hmm. the people they were with, wherever they set up camp, the mist didn't come. Um, mm. So somehow, somehow the mist did not affect you in the travels. Then once you got to um, Oakhart, because we didn't have a home. Once you got to Oakhart, and uh, then anytime they tried to travel out, they tested it. They said, "Well, look, we don't no longer affected by the mist." But any travels after that, they were affected by the mist. So I would be disinclined to try to travel south just because I know that where we came from was not livable. Um, So. I think Basilla well, is okay either way. I, I think so. East sounds good because it might be closer to Oakheart if we travel south than, you know. Yeah. And plus, we might find a village where we know there's supposed to be a village and Vasilla can perform her songs for the people there. Absolutely. Uh, um. Not that I think we have the the coin for it, but I don't suppose any of you know how to operate a boat. <laughs> Unfortunately, I well, we didn't do end have up a, on the water very much. Fair but enough. we do have a small stream next to Oakheart, so we probably mm-hmm. might know if only we hadn't been busy farming. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Craig, where would that even be a skill or? I don't see um, it. It would be a, it would be a talent, um, okay. but I would have. I mean, if you were going to try to navigate with a boat, um, we would probably use. I would probably just have you use just straight agility. Okay. Well, again, we don't have one. I don't think there's a strong enough reason for us to try and buy steel or make one now. Just a thought for the future. Yeah. Vasilla looks over at Aldrich and goes, how does the magic that makes boats float work? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. That got me. Aldrich's like, you know, I might have to study that. Might be, uh, could be a dark magic. So east it is then. <laughs> All right. Because it is a hex crawl, I need you to be specific. Uh, do we want to stay on the coast? So go southeast? Uh, yes, I think that's the consensus. Yeah, right along the coast is probably okay. the best play. All right, let's open right. up the party sheet and go to the travel. And I will reset everybody. And you guys can slide yourselves where you need to slide. Um, you should have control. I've heard that story before. <laughs> hey, it worked this time. All right. So we've got Sten leading the way. And you can also hike at the same usual. time. We're going to have Aldrich scout. Let's go ahead and put Vasilla and Osric up into hike then. Yeah. Oh, hang on. You able to find it, Aloy? Yeah. Okay, great. And Fox, you're able to find it? Um, I'm clicking on the travel section, but it's not moving over to there. There it goes. Aha. Yeah, We're beautiful. Yep. All right. Then just go ahead and slide yourself over to hike. Um, so let's start off with uh, Aldrich's roll. All right. Uh, scouting. Roll it. Hmm. Huh. Maybe. Well, that's not great. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> so Aldrich... Um, do you want to intensify your focus? Would you like to push the scouting roll? Yeah, let's go for it. But I thought right. everything was downhill from here. <laughs> <laughs> let's go ahead and hit put. Now, notice you're going to take two damage. You have to already have two banes. Yes. Okay. Um, it, if I'm correct, that gives me two willpowers as well, correct? That is also going to give you two willpower as well. All right. Yeah, then definitely. Let's go All for right, it. Let's go ahead and give it a push. Oh, oh. Hey. flipping sorcerers, man. So, aye, aye, aye. 
What does that do for us, Mr. Aldrich? That uh, is going to take your wits down to one. Out. Yeah. All right. Good news is, is you can, you got four willpower. <laughs> so I'd be interested. Um, this obviously was a very strenuous uh, mm. scouting. So and now keep in mind, uh, it's going to you know be damaging your wits, right? So th- your wits is your your mental stability, your mental fatigue, things like that. I'd be interested as we are traveling along the 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 coast of this river. How do you think this is manifesting itself? What do you think is exhausting, Alder? Can you kind of describe that to us as we travel? I think leaving town again and just starting to get further and further from home. His, his mind is settling back on how his father went missing and then came back from the mist like a madman. And he's starting to get a little, you know, like he's, he's, he's almost watching too much because he's just getting jittery and not actually catching any of the important details. Just everything's starting to spook him a little bit. Excellent. All right. So let's go ahead and do our next roll. Uh, let's go ahead and do our survival roll survival all righty so s- yeah, stem just trying to think if it um does it take my talents into account um i uh, don't actually believe... no i don't have one that modifies uh this one specifically so i'll just roll survival uh with no modifiers there it's gonna be that kind of night kid <laughs> oh god <laughs> So as Sten is kind of watching, uh, leading out ahead uh, as normal, as you guys have been doing, traveling, walking along the river, uh, you're starting to come up on a lake um, that's obviously to the east here of the hollows. But uh, Sten, you're having a hell of a time, um, hell of a time trying to. It's a very to... misty morning with the water yeah. coming off the lake and everything. Maybe there's rocks, like the terrain is too rocky and we need to go around and leave the water for yeah, a while. Yeah, keep stepping and... in the mud. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. But um, I'm I'm going to push it because I, okay. like, uh, I, can, I can risk that at this stage. There we go. Right. Much Un- better. Un- unlike our sorcerer, the push was successful. Let's go ahead and take uh, two damage uh, to right. your wits as well. And two willpower. And you also gain your two willpower. Excellent. So, so hang on. Uh, quick question here. Please. Do the skull results from the original roll still apply? Or... They do. Because you, so when it's you. Three, three damage to him, right? Or no? Uh, no, he no, only, he only he ended up with two. Down. So, so what oh, happens? It is... adds it up on the push roll. Yeah. It does. Oh. So what happens, Aloy, is when you push, you don't re-roll any ones or sixes. That's right. So it keeps them. Um, and, you know, any new ones potentially you could pick up. But he knew going into it, I think you had at least one that you were going to pick up. I think you picked up a second one. Right. Um, yeah. Cool. Cool. Uh, but it was successful, which was good. So uh, you guys are, you know, working your way along. And it's described by uh, Sten. You've got uh, a nice fog mist coming off of the river. And you see the river opening up to a lake. The lake itself um, appears to be easily, that is not what I meant to do. You're on the northern shore of the lake. Uh, The lake is roughly, looks to be about five miles long, uh, roughly about four miles wide. So it's a good sized lake and uh, no sign of civilization. The road that you're following that led into the hollows is slowly turning into a trail and slowly turning into just nothing um, as you continue walking along the the coast here. Now, it's a bit of a startle. Um, I'm imagining there's some rocks that are along uh, one, the northern coast, and you kind of come up on the rocks, and Aldrich really not um, really paying attention. Um, he seems pretty consumed at this point, um, thinking about what he mentioned uh aldrick and sten come around the corner and you see three dwarves um, and they are seem to be packing up camp and as soon as they see you um which is at the same time you two see them they immediately stand and are reaching for weapons and they say who goes there uh just travelers bound along the river no harm meant to no one where did you come from? Stan just kind of jerks a thumb over his shoulder. Uh, 
Hollow's village about, oh, I don't know, an hour or so along the river. So you, you were at the Hollow's? Aye. He's kind Tell of des- desperately hoping the others come up soon because he has <laughs> to talk to people now. <laughs> It doesn't take long. You guys hear the activity. I'm going to assume that the other two um, head up there immediately. You're seeing the same thing. These three stout dwarfs, um, and like I said, breaking down camp and now standing at attention with axes in their hands. You came from the hollows. Tell me. Was there a dwarf there brewing beer? Um, if, if you ask me, I'd say yes. If you ask him... Um, he doesn't seem to care. He doesn't seem to think of himself as a dwarf. He's a little touched in the head, if you ask me. So you see, you see that dwarf that asks the question, turns to the other dwarf, and it goes, I told you we were going to get him. I told you he was close. He's going to pay for all of it. All of it. So we just head down the river, takes us straight to the hollows, and where do we find him? Uh... <laughs> Uh, he's in a, uh, uh, there's a big brewery on the, um, south side of the river, I think it was. Just, the, yeah, yeah, I mean, you can't miss it. It's the, the biggest, it's the only one that looks like a brewery. What types of protections does he have? Gods? I don't know. We just stopped in and had a pint. He runs a business there, a tavern. <laughs> he used to run a business there. <laughs> Well, travel well and be safe. What what do you do to you? That's dwarf business. Oh. So they finish packing up, and uh, they seem, as long as you guys keep a distance, they seem okay uh, with how the conversation went. As as they start wandering out of earshot, I was like, I'm not a fan of that crazy dwarf, but I feel like they're going to kill him. Yeah, that seemed to be their intention. <laughs> I would say so. What do we I mean, we opted out of of getting ourselves in their, you know, business. Do we do we stop this? Do we what do we do? He, he treated us kindly, shared <clears throat> gave us breakfast, gave us beer, gave and you a survives, place to perform. And if he survives now, this attack, he'll remember that we were the ones heading out east. Hmm. I think we mm-hmm. owe it to him. Uh, to do what? They did they look armed, Craig? <laughs> oh yeah, they all all three of them had axes. Yeah. What are what are we supposed to do against three, you know, season, I mean, these are dwarves, right? Like aren't they supposed to be like pretty sturdy, pretty like, you know, well, scary? We, they are can, awfully well armed. Can we outrun them if we if we push back? I don't. Uh, you know, I don't try think to make so. It fast into the into the village. Well, they're dwarves. Their legs must be short. No offense, Vasilla, but hey, know. hey, hey, <laughs> hey! Three out of four of us race any day. Oh uh, well, damn! I don't know. I don't like it. That's for sure. It doesn't feel right. Well, we at least. Hmm. Well, we can owe it to him to give him a warning. I think we could make our way back, don't you? <sighs> Before they'd get there, though, and and they'd see us going back that way. They would for sure. I mean, and we we could try to sneak around them, but that would take more time. Unless was there, uh, Craig? Was it? Were we more or less doing a straight shot across the river, or was there like could we like cut overland and try and make so, it a shortcut? What, with a with a successful survival role, I would allow you to, you know, w- with with some effort, mm-hmm. be able to to not only catch up with them, but to to do that so that they can't tell they're being followed, right? So it's to be far enough along. So these these are open plains, but they're still rolling hills. There's still right. you know rock croppings. There's trees here and there. Um, and if if Sten was was smart about it, um, he, I, I could definitely see you guys successfully being able to to flank and either get between them in the hollows or reach them without them realizing that you're right behind them. Yeah. I, I I'm willing to take that shot. If we can try and reach the town yeah. uh, before they do. Yeah. And if I can assist you, I do have scouting, but I don't know if I can help you in some way. Uh, I don't know either, but 
am trying to remember how that assist works in this game. I... Basila starts to say something and then she stops and she kind of looks down at her feet and... I... I get to... Maybe I could distract them? Maybe I could keep them talking long enough, like... To get you guys ahead? Like... Uh, I don't know. It could. Uh, I don't it know. Could be dangerous. It might not work. But I don't know that maybe... I like the idea of you being alone with them. Yeah. Well, maybe Aldrich could stay with me, and the two of you who are better in the woods could go ahead. We could. We could figure out something. Like, cause they're gonna. I mean, even if you guys get ahead of them, you're gonna be what, like, 10, 15 minutes ahead. That's that's not gonna give him oh, much that's... warning. That's not uh, a bad idea. But you know, we could. We could. Um. We could make something up. We could say, you know, um, that we didn't want to tell them about the guards that he has. That you know, that that we could come up with something like something. I mean, well, uh, we got to make a choice quick. Um, if if you want to take that risk, I suppose you can. And then, you know, if they if they turn around and go somewhere else, maybe just come back to town and find us, I suppose. At the very least, we could buy you an extra half hour to an hour for him to be ready or for the town yeah. to be ready. These guys might might even be willing to cause, you know, this is the first town we've seen and yes. If if Oakhart is going to eventually start trading with these people, there needs to be a town left. I that much yeah. is true. I feel yep. like we owe it to y'all and we should probably do something to stop these guys. Aldrich, are you willing to help me out? Yeah, let's let's go for the okay. diversion plan. Yep. All right. Just don't wind up you with guys... axes in your heads. I'm faster than you. <laughs> so if I'm hearing this correctly, it sounds like what we're going to do is we're going to have Aldrich and Vasilla kind of run behind and say, hey, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Um, and kind of tie them up and have conversations. And then give me a better sense of what Osric and Sten's plan is. I think we're going to try and rush back to town without being seen, uh, try and get there before the dwarves and, do and warn uh, our friend. Yeah, wait, and, yeah. you know, so. Because at least warn them that these people are coming, right? So. Because they, you know, they sound like they have some claim to him and they know him from before, but our, our friend left, lost, his, lost his memory at some point. So, so we don't know the details here, right? But it sounds like a lynching more than a trial. So mm -hmm. whatever they think he's done, you know, they seem pretty sure of it. So. And if they're not willing to tell us, and he was fairly open about his past, I think, so, so uh, I'm not afraid of it. And I'd like a, um, I would like a survival roll, and you would be plus one on your skill with that. Okay. Uh, from help, from help. Um, I looked it up while you guys were talking. Thanks wow. for the role playing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Plus and when roll. you hit the roll, you'll have the option to add. Yeah, add I see it. Oh, yeah. Yes. Very nice. In fact, you got two successes on that. So let's go ahead, and you're going to have no trouble kind of outmaneuvering them to the north, um, mm -hmm. following the two of you, seeing, you know, where you can keep an eye on things, but stay out of sight the entire time. And, uh, and to clarify, are we trying to get to the hollows or are we trying to get between the dwarves and the hollows? I think we're trying to get to the hollows as quickly as Excellent. possible. Excellent. So now let's have the, as you, we, we're watching the two of you work your way uh, through this wilderness. Uh, I think it's safe to say at this point, um, a good hour and a half has passed. So we're right around 830 in the morning at this point. And we watch as Sten and Osric uh, navigate, uh, staying outside of outside of Stipe, but making good time, double time to make sure that they can get back to the hollows before the dwarves come. We then cut back and we see the three dwarves backpacks on. They've got their axes uh, attached to their belts. They're chatting and talking, uh, pointing, you know, kind of like, you know, wow, how pretty the lake is and uh, they're now kind of they're getting to where the lake is becoming the the river again, the river that we know upstream will become into the hollows. There are good good two miles from the hollows though they can't even see the hollows from where they are. And as the camera expands out a little bit, we see a young man and a tiny halfling woman running uh, along the banks. 
I'll just be just saying, hey, stop, stop. We we need to warn and you. I'll, and Vast Vassal will yell out, uh, good dwarves, good dwarves. I, uh, there's something we need to tell you. It's very important. So the one that really has been speaking for everybody, he turns around and he puts his hand on the axe. He goes, what new business has happened in the last 30 minutes? There was... I, we haven't been honest with you, um, about, about the hallows, about Yawin. And, and at first we thought maybe we, we owed him some sort of, of something of loyal thing, but honestly, we would feel like we walked into a trap. No, oh, it'd be devastating. In, into what really going on there. I I think you need to hear. Speak, I'm listening. <laughs> That's your cue, Fox. <laughs> Dramatic silence. Sorry, my, my no, 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 my uh, my computer was lagging. I didn't hear. I you okay. have to repeat that. I'm sorry. Uh, he, it's okay. He says he goes. I'm listening. All right. So the thing is, I'm. I didn't know about you specifically, but I think Yawin might know you're coming. There are guards in the brewery. Um, he specifically showed us a couple places where, like, things are pretty dangerous. Like, if I were you, I would, I would proceed with caution. This is yeah. uh, this is not something you can just walk up into. He's got a rust brother on his side. A rust brother. Oh yeah. Good call. And their friends? Uh, they seem to be. They seem to be on See, very the good other terms. Two, the other two dwarves are kind of like whispering to each other. He goes, give us a moment. Um, I would like a manipulation roll um, <laughs> from from my halfling, please. Okay. Oh, good. The halfling. <laughs> <laughs> good call. Good call, Greg. Yeah. All right. Give me a sec. Everything is running very slowly at the moment for some reason. Yeah, and in the stream, I don't think anybody else can see the fog of war. They just see the, the hollows. Oh, yeah, let's, uh, let's go ahead and, um, uh, Nick, can we switch over uh, to uh, the Forbidden Lands tab? You should be able to see the hex crawl. Uh, what just happened? It just shows one hex. Yeah, it's like the hollows in the lake it seems to be all that's on the stream. Uh, that, yeah, that's that's fine. That's what it should. That's what it should be. Okay. Oh, okay. Just a couple of hexes. Yeah. Cool. Okay. And you said manipulation, Craig. I do need a manipulation roll, sir. Okay. Find it on my sheet here. Da, 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 da. Sorry, everything is. I do not know why <laughs> everything for the first time is just loading so slow. It's like, I get to do something. No. Okay, manipulation. Hey, Nick, can we uh, maybe zoom out a little bit on uh, the Foundry screen so people can kind of get a better sense of where they've traveled and where they haven't? Oh, lots of dice. I forget how good you are at this. <laughs> it's a good liar. <laughs> All right, so two successes. So you were, you were definitely convincing. So they, they, uh, they break two off. successes? Yeah, I'm showing uh, two successes and uh, one bane, uh, but obviously the bane doesn't affect you because you're, unless you, uh, you, there's no reason to push this because you can't improve it. So one of the rules in the system is is you can't push unless it would improve yeah. the result. In this case, it wouldn't. So they walk, they walk uh, outside of your shot. Though you can you can hear them speaking. Um, they come back. And they say, "It's not clear to us why you're willing to help us over Yawin." Um, because we don't want to worry about what fighting in the town could possibly cause. We don't we don't want to see the people of the Hallows hurt your feud. And I mean, if I was walking into a Rust Brother, I would hope someone would warn me. And and the, the he's close with us, Rust Brother. Could you for some coin? 
could we get you to to trick Yawin to coming outside of the hollows? Can we lure him out and we'll wait for him? I'd, we would wait one moment. Walks back and they look and you see him pull a bag out and two gold. We'll give you two gold if we su- if you successfully lead him out of the hollows and we kill him. And upon his death, we will pay you two gold. We can do you better, actually, instead of getting him specific, because I don't think we're going to get him out of the hollows. But there's an old, unused part of the town that no one goes in. It's an old cemetery. If you were to get there at night, we could lure you in. And we could get Yawin to go to the cemetery at night. Do you think that we would be able to do this business in the cemetery without no the one, rest of the town knowing? No one's there. No one ever goes there. It's completely empty. They they they, yeah, they don't stay away from it for some reason. They don't use the cemetery anymore. Like you'll yeah. you'll see when you get there, it is just completely grown over. Excellent. But you'd, Excellent. you'd have to do it at night, I think, because no one really goes out at night, so it's a perfect oh, yeah. time. You'll, you'll see in broad daylight. So yeah. So we'll follow you. Lead us there. All right. Um, how yep. much time have we wasted now? <laughs> Ten minutes? It's still, it's still morning. Um, yeah. Uh, and we see now these three dwarves following uh, Vasilla and uh, our young sorcerer as they head back to the hollows. And I would assume the plan is, is that, you know, and they're, these gentlemen are going to make it clear to the two of you, you know, they don't want to be seen. Um, so once they're close enough where you potentially could be seen, they want to find a hiding spot where they could easily get to the uh, the, the, the cemetery uh, that, that mm-hmm. you speak of. Mm-hmm. So I do want to cut. Um, let's go ahead and fast forward. Let's go ahead and say we're looking at, um, say, right around at noon. And we now see Stan and Osric successfully now way ahead and coming back into the eastern gate of the hollows. Well, I think we're just going to make best speed back towards the brewery. Correct. So you come up, the gates are closed, um, but obviously you can easily just step over the uh, the, the fence. There's there's right. places where there's you have no difficulty doing that. Uh, so you, you step over the, um, the, the fence, People immediately look, look, and then they realize that they've seen you before in the last day or so. <laughs> they don't give you give you too much mind. As you work yourself uh, into the courtyard area, you see Olm sweeping the front porch of the Dead Hand Inn. He waves. He says, do you need a room again? Uh, hold that thought. <laughs> we might. Uh, we'll need to take care of some business first excellent excellent okay great well you know where i am that we good do. to see you friends good to see you as well so you work your way past the courtyard you head back uh, then we should send them to the inn they'll never get away <laughs> <laughs> you don't even know if rooms will be available Stan. <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> so you, you, head, you head south you get to the bridge uh you cross the bridge and uh, you can see a couple boys uh, lugging some some barrels uh, to and back from the uh, brewery um, to the three skulls. Uh, mm-hmm. Overlooking it, you can see Yawin standing, uh, kind of you know ordering. You know, yep, that goes in there. That goes in there. He's got his back to you. Uh, Yawin, deep friends. You got a problem. Yes, but from my understanding, you're going to fix it. But we don't talk about that here. It's a different problem. We met company on the road. Uh, perhaps we should talk in private. Uh, oh, of course, of course. So he leads you into the Three Skulls and yeah. tells the boys to go, you know, yeah. focus on the brewery. He closes the doors. He closes the windows. Uh, it is just the three of you inside yeah. of the of the main brew. Yeah, when we ran into three dwarves headed this way and his eyes get huge they said they're looking for you oh my lord and, and they, they don't look... think they're bringing you a present no Did, do they know i'm here yes yep 
How far away are they? How much time do I have? Um, I don't know. The other two that were with us were going to try and slow them down a little bit, but uh, yes. I, I wouldn't think too much too long. Half an hour, maybe. What's what's this about? They sounded like they wanted to kill you. They, they, it's a long story, long and short. They're very jealous of my beer. They have accused me of you using a human recipe for the beer. And when I got accused of that in my town, they, they, they ran me out of town or I, I left and, and, and I came to the hollows. This was about 10 years ago or so. I, I can't believe, I guess with the mist up now, maybe, boy, dwarves hold grudges. I why tell wouldn't you, you use dwarf. a human recipe? I, I, I would never use a human recipe. I would only use a dwarven recipe. But I thought uh, you hated dwarves. I, I sort of <laughs> I put my hand on Sten's shoulder like he looks oh, around, right. he makes sure that he's he's around, he goes Truth be told, I am a dwarf. No. <sighs> but it's cru it, 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 I never wanted anybody to I never wanted tales leaving the hollows of a dwarf that lived in the hollows. I I feared that they would track me here and you know, shaved. And, you know, I look nothing like a dwarf and I've been among the humans for so long that uh, I know it's a shock to you, but you have to trust well, me. If I were to roll the beard forward, out. From this I'll never say a word of it. I'm going to be out. Safe with us. Yes. You, you would recognize him and you would believe me. But I'm, so, completely, I'm completely innocent of these charges and, oh my lord. Um, so is there anything you can do to appease them? To, to get them to... No, they, 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 they would want to kill me. Um, well, how many were there? Three. Three of them. There's me. There's two of you. What would it? What, what would it take <laughs> for me to hire you to defend me and the Three Skulls Tavern? I mean, we're, we're not killers. Well, we're not. Today you may be. We're not the most experienced of fighters, but I, for <laughs> one, I, 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 for one, value friendship. Uh, I would stand by your side, but we need more. You know, just just three of us might not be enough to get these dwarves. Uh, Is there any kind of uh, watch in town or uh, anybody else who might stand with you? Most of them are in Palma's pocket. Um, I could potentially get a couple boys to help me. I, uh, it's possible I could I could talk the gamekeeper into helping me, but I doubt it. Um trying to decide what, what, what I know nothing I know nothing of this and you see him he, he, he's as he's talking he goes around behind the bar and he comes out and he he has a dwarven battle axe very similar to the, the axes mm -hmm. that you saw the other gentleman has he goes I goes I don't I know I, I, I know how to swing this as a dwarf but I, I tactically what what is what should we meet them out there should we should we hold them up here and fight in here I'm, I'm afraid that this will ruin my reputation in town though if if word got out that I was bringing trouble to the town, I, what what do the two of you think? And 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 what would I owe you if you were to save me? If we were to kill and 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 get rid of this problem? Hmm. Hmm. Well, we know they'll be coming here, so they'll walk in through the eastern gate just as we did. Uh, uh, I wonder if there's someone who could convince them that you had fled. So I, I, I thought of that. It'd be easy enough to hide me. I know I could, I could be hidden, but then they would, they would either raise my, my tavern. Uh, I'm sure they would destroy the brewery, and and again, I, I would, my, my days at the Hollows would be over. I, I, I much prefer to eliminate them. Let, let, we are three brave men. Let, let us, let us stand together, and and with with five silver apiece in each of your purses we will stand and we will we will launch and we will march out to meet them and and, and it will be an epic battle one that your minstrel will your, your minstrel will, will tell great tales of of Yawin the great and his two allies that battled and, and admonished the evil dwarves from the hollows but we'd have to do it before they got here uh, what say he uh, hmm. I was going to say we should fight them from inside so only one of them can come through the door at a time. I, I understand <laughs> that, but... Do, do you understand this? This would give Miss Palmer everything she needs. Everything she needs to turn the town against So you. would one of them putting an axe through your head. I, 
do a little manipulate roll there. Uh. <laughs> oh, yeah, because I'm Sten, real you, good at that. You sweet talker, Sten. <laughs> you have them people skills. Oh, yeah. Uh, what, I don't what is, this is, what is, this is people? not unexpected. Yes. <laughs> I don't, re don't recommend you push this roll. <laughs> Let me think. No, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. I, 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 well, you must... I, 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 I hear you. I hear you, but but I can't let them come to the hollows. I can't. We, we must meet them out there. We must battle them there. So well, I have I... an important question at this point, Craig. Um, so did that do uh, two empathy damage to me? It did not. If you were to push it, it would oh, automatically... Oh, push it. Okay, all right, good. Because otherwise I would just have fainted in the middle of the tavern. Okay, good. Carry on. That's why I say don't, don't push it. Cause yeah, push exactly. It, roll new dice. It's a terrible no dice. idea. <laughs> but it'd be yeah. one way to get we're going to need new Sten. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Osric, you were going to make a statement? I'm just wondering, you, you've... You've been here for years now. Uh, you you must have allies in this town. Uh, How much time do we have? I, I don't know. Depends on, be... on if the little one and the uh, the blacksmith could slow them down some. And just for meta wise, you're looking at probably you're guessing anywhere from thirty to sixty minutes. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it, it is is the sooner right? Depending on right. how successful uh, right. your compadres are, they might be here in half an hour. I mean, okay. Let's do this. Go to the eastern gate. Make sure that if they get there before I reach there, that they do not come in. Do not let them pass the gate. I, I will be there. Give me 15 minutes. Let me see if young Jim and, can talk his father into coming with me. He's just a farmer. But it's another another hand, right? Another person. Yes. And uh, that would allow us to... We would then outnumber them. Uh, do, do Rust Brothers like dwarves? Um... Yeah. You're asking. You're asking Yawen. Yeah. I do. I don't want to involve Sturkus. All right. <laughs> Just thinking if they're coming to invade the town, and he's trying to keep things <laughs> safe and prosperous. But you know him better than I am. I, again, I'm, my my fear is that Sturkus would get involved. Sturk, Sturkus would admonish them, or even worse, they would kill Sturkus, <laughs> which would bring all types of of heat down on onto the Hollows with with the rest of the Rust Brothers. Um, either way, suddenly I am a problem. I am I am something that is causing causing issues. It would fit right into the narrative of that old witch. I see. Give me 15 minutes. Go to the eastern gate. Make sure that they don't come in. And and I will see if I will see if I can get the old the old 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 Jim Farmer there. I wonder if he can come out and I can pay him a pay him a few silver. Very well. And he he went. He goes ahead and he grabs five silver and hands each of you five silver. So go ahead and add five silver to your purse. Cool. So now the question is: When we get to the gate, do we just leave? <laughs> um, you can do what you want, no, but my pride, not. my my <laughs> pride is never back away from a fight. Okay, so, fair enough. Um, That's good. <laughs> it's it's hard to uh, hard to push that. <laughs> Yeah. So I, I would be curious to know what either what type of conversations or what were you going to see as as Osric and Sten get, get to the Eastern Gate before we cut away? If, uh, if they get here before he gets back, they're going to recognize us. What are we going to say? No, don't come in. I'll tell we them. Can... Well, they don't. Why are they carrying out justice in this, I... this village? You know, they have no right to come in here. This this man. You know, what is this crime? Just changing a recipe? That is no reason to do execute a man or all, all these folk are mad. I don't I don't even know. Yeah. <sighs> well, let's just keep an eye out, I suppose. All right. Hope he doesn't run out the back door. All right. All right, so we see the camera. Follow our friends as they head to the eastern gate uh, we now go to the three dwarves are now about three quarters of a mile out and osric or uh i'm sorry not uh, yeah not osric but um aldrich aldrich thank you aldrich and vasilla are at the top of the hill and you guys can see the two of you see the hollows um mm. uh, three quarters of a mile away so you don't see anything happening in the hollows and immediately 
Aldrich puts his hand up to stop the dwarves from coming up any farther on the hill. And the dwarves stop. So this is this is the town. Uh, the graveyard is in the just northernmost section. And the, the dwarf kind of peeks his head around so he can see, but trying to keep himself concealed um, from that, he goes, I, I, I see it. Well, the, the, the wall doesn't feed... The, the wall protects nothing. Yes, the, the, the wall is kind of useless. <laughs> you can easily climb over it to get into the cemetery after we lure Yawin there. And, and you it has to be done at night. It has, it has to, to be, be done, done at night. night. Okay, so we should... All right, so walk me through the plan then. So we, we will stay here. We will stay away from the path or from the road. <clears throat> we will we will wait till wait till the sun has dropped. Can we can we go right in right as soon as... Or should we wait a little bit longer? Like when does... I would give it probably an hour, let everybody get settled into their homes, let everybody, you know, doing their thing. And then, um, because the key is we can't involve anyone else in the town, because then you might rally the town against you. Everyone in town loves Yawin. And the Rust Brother. Yeah, and the, yeah, the Rust Brother. So what you have to do is you have to give it about an hour, go into the cemetery, and we will bring Yawin there, um, we'll say maybe an hour and a half after you get in there, like between an hour to an hour and a half after you get in there, let him, let his business calm down a little bit and then we'll sneak him right through. So. I love this plan. This is a good plan. And, and as soon as, and we're going to hide in the cemetery and you will bring, you will bring Yawin to the cemetery. We will end his traitorous, evil, evil, traitorous, dwarven traitor. We will end his life. And when his blood is on my axe, it is then I will pay you each the gold for the, for, for, for defending the honor of the dwarves. Sounds like a great plan. You guys have it all worked out. All right. Do, do, what a plan. do what you, do what you will. We will, we will wait here out of sight. We'll watch to make sure no one's leaving. No one sees us. And then an hour, hour after nightfall, we will head into the cemetery and wait for you. That sounds like a plan. That sounds perfect. We will perfect. make our preparations. Okay. Be careful. So, do not be seen. <laughs> the two of you start heading towards the eastern gate, and obviously it doesn't take you too long to realize that you can see uh, both Osric and Sten are standing there. In fact, you then see Yawin um, coming through the gate. He unlatches the da- gate, and he opens up the gates. He's got this stringy old man <laughs> with him. Who's Worse than me? Him. Yeah. He's got a sky... <laughs> Um, he might be 75 pounds wet <laughs> and, and uh, he's standing there with Yawin and Yawin comes out and he goes, have you seen them? Oh yeah, we, we, uh, we have a plan. Excellent. What, okay, wonderful. So what we're going to do, you, you tell us where they are. We are going to head out and, and the four, five, six of us now, six of us will go and we will end their, their, their awful, awful lives. Yawin, Yawin, can I ask us a single question? What would happen if, for instance, someone doesn't ring the bell at night? What what what's a what's a consequence of not ringing the bell at night in in this town? And, and they would be within within the wall. Mm-hmm. Like yes. the cemetery, maybe. They, they the the dead would take them. Okay, so we've told them to wait for us in the cemetery at night, about an hour after nightfall. <laughs> Problem solved. He, he, he turns to Sten. He goes, "I, I like her. She has much better plans than you. She's Your dangerous. Terrible. She's phenomenal. We, uh, so, we convinced him to hold off. Uh, and we told them that the uh, the Rust brother was your ally, which gave them enough pause to try to do a more subtle approach. Is everybody in your town this smart? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I, uh, I, mm-hmm. I, I would say it's just those two, but you know they're not excellent. halflings, but they're not too bad. <laughs> excellent, excellent. All right, so nightfall, they will they will make their way into the into the cemetery. The dead will take care of them, and uh, he turns to old farmer Jim. He goes, Jim, you and I, we we, we should keep watch, uh, maybe maybe up the mountain a bit, and as soon as we see them dead, we can we can unless the dead you know consume them themselves if they don't we can get rid of the bodies before anybody in the town wakes this is a wonderful idea wonderful idea 
it keeps us from being killed, which is which is you know what my plan was. Also very know. good. Yes. yes. Wouldn't want anyone to get hurt. Staying staying alive is also a good plan. <laughs> I like your goals. So so what do we do now? We need to make them think that we are. If they, they could possibly be looking at us right now, they they're they're close by. We need to make <laughs> it look like. We need to make it look like we we are following their plan, which is to ambush you in the graveyard. Okay. So we just need to go back let's in back town. In. What's that? Let's head back in. Yes. Yeah, let's go back yeah. to town. Pretend like everything's great. To the three skulls. To the three let's skulls. Go. So the camera cuts to the Three Skulls Tavern, and uh, he's got uh, the door closed. All the sh- things are shuttered. He's given a- given ale to whoever wants it. Uh, sure. Seems anxious. He's pacing. Uh, is there Not anything that we um, want to do, or do we smash cut to the evening? I mean, I'll have lunch. Yeah, we'll just... <laughs> Yeah. Take a a little course. Of hospitality. Yeah. Yep. Uh, as far as the fourth <laughs> the fourth day of spring rise, you've had all of the water and food you need. And yes. no 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 need to roll dice. He feeds you and treats you well, of course. And Vasilla will like kind of lightly perform for whoever's there, just you know. Keep everybody well, a few things. Things. He he yeah. is close. He's put a close sign out on the ah. front of uh, the three skulls and no. it um it's he, just he a practice. A, she's working on sure. uh, she's working on Sten the Merciless, uh, verse thirteen. Verse 13, actually. <laughs> as long, if it's as good as eight. Is there a way in the interim to recover any damage to my wits? You know what? We can go ahead and let's have, uh, our, uh, let's recover for a quarter day. So, yes. So, everybody, um, you won't plan. sleep. Um, cool. But you can go ahead and you can rest for a quarter day. Uh, so, yes, let's get everybody's stats back up to full. Excellent. Cool. Taking a break. <laughs> All right. Do we want to smash cut to the evening? I I think so. So yeah. well, I mean, do we need to yeah. plan out in any more detail? So basically, we're you two are going to lead all inconspicuous um, Yawin off to the graveyard, um, and then I guess we'll just follow at a distance and be ready to participate in the ambush if the dead haven't solved the problem. Yeah, seems okay. Seems we we need to make sure we we. We definitely need to make sure we ring the bell. Yes, yes, yeah. we do. Everybody <laughs> rings the bell. And it says the say words. the ritual phrase, yeah, which I don't remember exactly what it was. I, I walk in peace. Uh, we come in peace to, yeah. yeah. Walk, walk in peace with the, walk the dead. Walk in peace with the dead. Yeah. Honored dead, yeah. <laughs> All right. So it, it is now dusk. Sun is beginning to set. It's starting to get dark. We see lanterns starting to get lit in the homes. Uh, dark with inside of the three skulls he lights uh of course has the fire where he's been cooking a another hog and has has candles going he's just more and more nervous and he goes would it would it make more sense if if if, if maybe we 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 hid and, and watched to make sure that they were taken care of i i i don't i don't we'll, I don't... we'll make sure they're i mean we'll be We'll move out to to make like we're going to meet them at the time, just to make sure. Because but hopefully the dead have taken care of them by the time we were supposed to meet them out there. So we can, you know, they're going to be there an hour after dark. So we have a little bit of time. So let, let's say that you got roughly about thirty minutes when when you think that they would they would follow along with this. Uh, so can we can help me understand what we're doing? I, I mean, I think we we have to go there because whether mm-hmm. or not if if we just show up, if the dead have taken them away, we won't know for certain if they're yeah. gone. That's for so sure, yeah, we Vasilla, need to make our way like, up. Yeah, Vasil and I go basically out in the open. Um, so if they are watching and they haven't been taken yet, the plan seems still on course. Right. Maybe should... Osric and I should head out first. Yeah, and then Osric and... instead try to more no. stay. And in. y'all. Should Yawin be with us just in case to, to keep the illusion up? Sure. If he, yeah. should, he can maybe come later. Like, like if we do end up there first, we can tell the dwarves he's coming behind us. Right, oh. right. He's on his way. Okay. Um, when we go outside, Vasilla will ring the shit out of that bell. <laughs> <laughs> well, and now it sounds like the Osric and... and um... Uh, Sten are heading out first, so mm-hmm. give give me a rough idea. Looking at the map, can you guys give me a rough idea? So if we're we're planning on them kind of being here, right? 
That's where we kind of expect them to cross. If you look mm -hmm. in the upper northern part yep, there, yep. Yeah. Um, I'd like to get an idea what um, where you guys would like to be. I feel like our best bet in terms of getting unknown is to be maybe like, uh, sorry, a, is it a double click? I don't I just, it's a long click, long, long left. Click. I'm thinking maybe somewhere like this, you know, at least to approach and sort of get a get a look at the place, you know, so we're sort of behind a house and then maybe, you know, come to the corner here and see if we can see them. And, right. and Yawin yeah. makes it clear to the to all of you that even ringing the bell, you don't want to go in to the cemetery oh okay okay, okay. Yeah, um, noted important safety tip yes yeah. yep yeah. so avoid the cemetery okay. so the two of you it is now night has fallen <laughs> uh we hear we hear uh as you guys work your way through town you can hear some revelry and uh a crowd is obviously in the dead dead man hand in um since it's the only one open tonight that's true it's money yeah. out of your pocket yelling <laughs> as you're going Sten, you're keeping an eye out, and they're trying to be sneaky about it, but you, you notice the lantern, <laughs> and you can see a lantern working its way from the northeast, headed, back, uh, headed into the new cemetery, which is outside of the wall, mm -hmm. and they've now worked their way, and they're now hiding behind what it looks like a mausoleum building right next to a very large tree. Okay. So they've worked their way to there. And we haven't seen the dead walking out yet, right? Or there has been, there's, we've not seen anything, anything, uh, uh, un, uh, supernatural at this point. Yeah. Okay. So they start to, and just yell at me if you, if I need to stop the action, right? Mm -hmm. So you see them work up, they get close to the wall. They're very super cautious. You see them cross over the wall, kind of. Yeah always looking but they can only look so far they can only see so far because they obviously mm -hmm. don't want the lantern to be seen sure and you're kind of losing them now so they've crossed over to the wall mm -hmm. they've worked their way into into the cemetery mm -hmm. and it's difficult difficult to track them um but they seem to be kind of working their way more towards you know the, the center of things here okay well, I'm just going to focus on listening right now if I can't see them just to, you know, basically I'm, I'm hoping to hear some horrible agonized screams. Best case scenario. Yeah. Sure. You know, not, not coming from us. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> We're on this side of the graveyard. <laughs> so you use it, using, using your hearing and, you know, and your sight and stand and Ostrich, you're helping too, of course. You're able to find them and, and they've kind of hold themselves up against a broken down mausoleum uh, that basically the entire top half of it has been ruined and they're behind the ruins there and you can see them they've got two axes in their hand and they lean up and they turn around they try to look to the south and to the west and then they come back down and they crouch um, so can we see um, Yawin and, and Vasila and Aldrich yet? So you look to the look to the southwest, and you can see the other th the three of them are, are working their way up. Now they're by no means within sight of mm -hmm. of the uh, our dwarven party. So Sten, you look back, and Ostrich, you look back at them. And now on the other side of the mausoleum, the side closest to you, mm -hmm. opposite of the side that they are on, you see a hand reach out from the ground. And grab the wall and then another hand grab the wall and you see a body pull itself out of the ground and it grabs the wall and just starts pulling its way Instead up and just starts you know tapping <laughs> Osric on the shoulder uh, uh, Osric is looking at the nearest bell just in case we need to ring it again right to the... there's one on every building Yep. The emergency yeah. backup bell. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> to the left, to the left of that, there seems to be it seems to be you know a, a fog coming out of the ground, mm -hmm. and it's it's a greenish tinted fog, and it starts to form. And now, the green fog works its way over the top, and this shambling body starts working its way 
around the eastern part of this mausoleum and you just see this apparition just go onto the other side and you hear a and the other the other monster zombie is like works its way around you hear like the clashing of of the of, of the axes as they hit the wall and they're hitting the stone and then silence i think we're gonna have to buy the halfling and the blacksmith a beer <laughs> that this was a that really was, good idea that was uh <laughs> extremely unethical but extremely effective yes <laughs> well so now so back for a pint uh <laughs> you see you see you see this ghost apparition come mm-hmm. back and rise up mm-hmm. above the mausoleum you see this zombie creature shamble around, back around from the backside of this mausoleum. It's missing an arm. Mm-hmm. You see just blood, fresh blood on its arm and coming out of its mouth. And they're starting to work their way south towards you. Mm. Uh, yeah, let's, let's, I, let's head back. To yeah, the I, I think nice. this, is a, go. this is a good time to mm-hmm. leave. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> let's just go time. walking in peace with the honored dead. Here we go. <laughs> yes, here we go. <laughs> We did a good thing today. <laughs> yeah, we, well, <laughs> make sure you feed your pet zombies. Yeah. Ring the bell of the nearest building as we, you know, hurry along the street. Just in case. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Exactly. So you guys, the two of you make it into into the uh, the courtyard where the where mm-hmm. the well is. Right. And if just at that time, Yawin is there with his axe, uh, and he's got Vasilla and Aldrich with him, and they see you come out. Mm-hmm. Oh, hey, gentlemen. It's seems everything worked according to plan uh uh there's no more noises coming out from there uh, did you hear it uh over here or was it not loud enough didn't catch anything it? it's no. didn't hear anything from here i think mm-hmm. we it, can assume it worked <laughs> it, it didn't seem to take the locals long to express their displeasure yes Guess they weren't walking in peace with the dead. As this discussion is happening, the, the door to the large building here Mm-mm. flies open. Oh no! <laughs> and you see an old woman comes out with her cane, and she's got a she's got a lantern out there. She goes, mm-hmm. "Who's out here?" Did you ring the behind bell? her? Is a very tall gentleman in a uh-huh. completely black cloak oh. with a metal necklace, all mm-hmm. rusted. Hmm. Oh, so he's spending the night. Interesting. Okay. Um, we I, just uh, we thought we heard something out here, and it's it's nothing. It turns out it's fine. We're gonna go back to what we were doing. Shouldn't you ring the bell if you're out at night? She's standing on the porch. She goes, <laughs> I, "I will worry about that." Uh, our apologies. Was... We have not met yet. Yawin, who are your friends? Yawin goes, they're just passerbys, uh, Lord Sturkis. They, they, they're only passerbys. There's, they're peaceful men, uh, and uh, this lovely, this lovely halfling. Uh, I didn't even know halflings existed. That she's, she's wonderful. She should play for you. She's very good. But uh, no trouble here. We, we were, we heard the noises from the graveyard, and we step out. We see you. Oh, we wouldn't go to the graveyard. That's that's a terrible idea. We know better than that. Yeah, we were at the Three Skulls. We heard the noises, too. That's why we're here, investigating. Come here, Yawin! <laughs> Sturkus motions. Yawin hands Osric his axe. <laughs> he walks up, and you can see the old woman. Sturkus gets up there, and she is mad. You can't really <laughs> tell what thing she's like pointing at him, and he's doing this kind of thing. And Rust Brother Sturkus is there. <laughs> kind of trying to calm the Palmer down a little bit. <laughs> and he goes like this to Yawin. And Yawin goes. So Yawin turns around, comes back, and he goes, "You have to go." You, you, you have to leave. I, I will clean up the bodies. I will take care of everything. Um, uh, Sturkus wants you gone. Doesn't, doesn't want to ever see you here again. 
Um, and I will make sure I will make sure that everything's taken care of. I cannot thank you. The four of you saved my lives. Well, did you did you make sure the these two get their share of the silver, maybe out of sight of circus? Yes, yes, of, of, of course. Let, let me walk you to the gate. Right. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. Good idea. So, well, he walks you to the gate. Um, when you get to the gate, if you ever need anything, you tell me. And and if you make contact and we can set up trade, let me know. And the other thing that we discussed before, if you ever change your mind, mm-hmm. I can make sure that I can distract Sturkis and and it would be safe and we would we would you know what I'm talking about. It's a long story. Yes. He gives, he yes. gives uh, five silver to both. Uh, the Masilla goes. Masilla goes. If you can get into the cemetery, those dwarves said they could pay us five gold each. So there's money there. <laughs> just, just be careful. They brother Sturkis doesn't <laughs> doesn't so see he, you. So he waves as you guys uh, head back. <sighs> uh, well, yeah, yeah, when... <laughs> So we're at the. Uh, we're going to say that you're going to go ahead and be um, still in the third quarter of the day, right? So you've got two quarters left. Uh, let's go ahead and have put you back here uh, at the at the at the lake. Um, but um, if we're if we're going to rest, we're going to probably want to take this this quarter day for someone to set up camp, and it might be might be a good place to set up camp. Yeah, sure. I don't we, go we did. Night. We did rest a bit uh, at the at the tavern, so mm-hmm. you know we we can we can set up camp just outside town. Yeah. Vasilla can do some fishing in the lake. Oh, okay. Yes. All right, so let's do this. Let's go ahead and uh, open up the party. And we'll go to the travel. And uh, who's going to make camp? Uh, I think that's usually my department. Yeah. All right. So let's head over and put you in make camp. Um, and did I hear uh, Vasilla's going to go fishing? I, I could try fishing as well. Excellent. Let's move you both over yep. to fish. And then Aldrich. I uh, guess I'll just keep watch. Do I need to do that at camp or? Um, yeah. It, okay. Keep watch. And then now the only thing is, is also somebody sleeping. If you're going to have a, a, a third quarter of the day watch like you like you did before. So if you remember, we had somebody sleep now. Mm, so right. They could, so they could keep watch in the last part of the day. Yeah, I guess I could sleep now then, and then I'll keep watch later. All right. Um, do we want? Does either Ostrich or Vasilla want to keep watch, or do they both want to fish? Uh, I'll, I'll let I'll let Vasilla fish then, and I'll. Okay. If you'll I'll keep, keep watch, watch, I can. Uh, I'm... You set up the camp. It's it's good. You can set up the camp. No, I'm 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 doing the camp. Yeah. Oh. I'll do... Hang on, who, who was that? I yes. wasn't looking. Sten, I was sorry, looking Sten, the... Sten's yeah. making the camp. Okay. Aldrich will sleep. If Osric keeps watch, and Vizilla fishes, I think we're good. Sure. Yeah, that's all right. Beautiful. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and get some rolls in. As uh, let's first, let's see how um, setting up camp goes. Sten, don't forget. Uh, I believe the you get a gear bonus from the tent. I think you are correct. Let's see. Oh, I'm not carrying the tent, so I can't see. But I think it's was it plus one or plus two? Remember it being uh, plus two. Check. Large tent bonus is two. Excellent. Yes. Right. So we'll add two gear bonus. <sighs> um. Well, sure. What could possibly go wrong? All right, let's go ahead and push it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, so no, no. Take this is fine. <laughs> one damage to your wits from yep. the survival uh, yep, yep, boom, yep. but you did get your success, which is wonderful. Yep. Um, I would like to have Osric now keep watch for me. Uh, this is uh, survival. Uh, you can do it right off of the sheet. So if you go to the travel sheet, yes, there's a keep watch go. button right above where you are. It'll automatically Here do scouting. Here we go. That's a survival roll, so I roll it off survival, and uh, not a good start. So why did it do it for? No, it, it's going to be uh, scouting, uh, Osric, for keep watch. Oh, so oh is look, it, it's scouting. Yeah. Oh, I thought it so was. Survival. That's okay. Oh, it's go to even the, worse. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> go, we'll me, go, let's do a fresh roll. So go to the yes. group sheet. Go oh, to the party sheet. Do it. Just do you there. see where it okay. says keep watch scouting right above your name? 
Yep, got it. Right. Here we go. Great. Okay, then. Uh, I'm sure nothing will come trouble us at night. Uh, thinking no. Uh, do I want to push this? No, just one die for no. Yeah, no. Uh, no, not it worth it. doesn't seem, yeah. <laughs> oh, you know what I should have done? I, 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 I could have used willpower to switch it to another skill. That's what uh, that's true. Done. The joy of humanness. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, next time, I guess. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> yeah. All right. I am quickly making sure that the fog of war is updated for Nick. Nick, did that take care of the fog of war? Good. All right, I'll put you guys back. Beautiful. All right. So we have got everybody got keep watch, um, maybe dozing off a little bit <laughs> while we're doing it. Uh, Osterick, we've got Sten making camp. Uh, we now need to see how the fishing goes, Vasella. You see where you can do that? Let's see. And then make sure make sure you hit, hit, calculate for your gear bonus because mm -hmm. you have. Uh, I, uh, I have a fishing, hook, which is one, I believe. Yeah. Fishing rod is that? Oh, fishing rod! I That's have a one. fishing yeah. line. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Uh oh. <laughs> you guys are knocking it out tonight. Decisions, decisions. Does she want? Does she want to push the fishing roll? Now, before before we do that, you've all eaten today. Um. No, I think, I think we're, we all we're, got we're, supplies. We're good. So, we have our. Yeah, we're not desperate. Yeah, we have our supplies, so I'm not going to push it. Excellent. Just for that. Yeah. Excellent. So, as you set up camp, you guys kind of reconvene. Uh, Aldrich has woken up. Uh, the other three of you are ready to kind of settle down, and uh, you're around the campfire. It's a chilly evening. Um, really nice breeze coming off of the lake, though. Um, really pretty. You can see see your campfire just reflecting uh, on the water as it ripples. Any type of discussions happening around the campfire before we uh, doze off and we allow um, young Aldrich to uh, keep watch in the fourth quarter? Vasilla is surprisingly quiet throughout the whole night. Uh, even after she fishes, doesn't really catch anything. She's just kind of like to herself just a little bit. Yeah, Sten is also pretty quiet. He'll probably, you know, say to Vissel at one point, that was a that was a clever thing you did. Probably also a horrible thing, but damn clever. Well, I say those dwarves have no right come she, she kind of for changing a recipe. A bit and she's... So you're breaking up, Fox. I didn't um, I did Sorry, hold on. Can you hear me now? Yep. yep, we got you. Better? Yep. She says, I didn't kill them, actually. I mean, they they just did what I told them to, so that's not the same as... I mean, it, it's, it's, it's not the same, is it? Right? Like... <sighs> she kind of gives a heavy sigh, and goes, I just don't know. I don't... Whatever it is, we helped someone who helped us. Okay. That's true. I just, um, let's not make a habit of feeding people to zombies. Please. Yeah, I let's, <laughs> let's not put that on the regular things to do list. Agreed. It is the great explorers, feeders <laughs> of zombies. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we might leave that out of the song. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm imagining under the tent... The three of you um, get into your bedrolls, nuzzled in. You can hear the, the crickets, some frogs making some noises uh, from the lake itself. Uh, Aldrich uh, steps out to and then enjoy the fire uh, after putting his bedroll away. And I need to keep watch from Aldrich. All right. I found myself over there and roll it. That is hey, more. Somebody dice. has dice. That is more dice than Osric. <laughs> <laughs> so it's quiet now. Um, how do you pass the time uh, when you're by yourself, Aldrich, sitting by the fire? Probably going through most of his equipment, making sure it's all in good shape. He likes to keep everything 
well maintained naturally. Um, besides that, um, he's he probably so he normally is wearing thick leather gloves. He takes one off and he's kind of reading the runes that are like scarred into his hands and just thinking where this might lead him, following the paths. Excellent. All right, so let's take ourselves to 6 a.m. It's a brand new morning. <sighs> that was well. Event. At least now we know the exact path to go down this lake. <laughs> <laughs> I would have done that again. Um, so, I, I don't suppose there's any reason we should hang around here any longer. Let's keep going. No, down the I river. think getting ourselves as far away as possible is probably the best bet. <laughs> That's in Fair case enough. that Rust brother gets changes his mind. I uh, I did not like the look of that uh, guy. He was creepy. I. They don't sound like the most friendly folk. All right. Well, on uh, on to the northeast, I guess. All right. So let's spend this uh, first half of the first half of the first quarter of the day. We'll head <laughs> to the northeast. Let's go to the party sheet. And let's do our assignments. Oops. I just put myself there, Craig. Come on. <laughs> Keep giving me a lip. I'll reset it again. <laughs> <laughs> Don't push me, man. I'll turn this party around. <laughs> I'll, turn, I'll turn this party around. I'll, 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 we'll go back to the hollows. <laughs> Doesn't matter which direction you go. All roads lead to, all the, lead hollows. to the hollows. <laughs> it's, it's Groundhog Day. In oh, the God. <laughs> Ground Hollows Day. Yeah, there we go. Oh, nice. Uh, okay, so we've got hot. Ostrich hiking. we got Vasilla oh. hiking. Uh, let's go ahead and let's have our amazing multiple success lead the way roll from Sten. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, let's, we have... or... <laughs> let's see what happens. Oh, I don't have permission to roll from that journal entry sheet, so I'm just going to roll survival. From oh, you don't? That's what it's telling me. Jerks. I know, right? You got to click on your, you got to click underneath it, not the main. Yeah, you click uh, on like the part that says underneath all it. All right, well, let me Keep do. Keep watch scouting. Uh, scouting. lead the way. There we are. Ah, oh, okay. It does let me do it there. All Yay. Right. Science. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yes. Beautiful. So we have leading the way. We've got Sten. Uh, getting a little bit more comfortable with kind of the lay of the land, being next to this large lake, uh, able to kind of navigate through things and uh, head out there. Let's go ahead and let's get a quick um, keep watch from Aldrich to see how things go. All right. Roll it. Still doing good. All right. Look at us go. So it's relatively uneventful morning as you guys work, guys and gals work your way up. Roughly about 10 o'clock. Uh, you're now, um, the lake is far behind. You guys are continuing on the river. You can see the river headed east, um, starting to curve to the northeast as you go. Um, up ahead, though, roughly about 100 yards or so, Aldrich, you see a horse drinking out of the river on, on the other side, on the south side of the river. Hmm. Just a horse? Just a horse, as far as you can see. And as from from where you are, with your two successes, you can see he has saddlebags. Interesting. And it's a large horse, larger than any horse that you ever saw in Oakenheart. Okay. Um, he's like, uh, there might be someone up ahead, guys. Uh, there's a horse across the river. She might want to keep her eye out for any other uh, individuals on the on the path. Yes, let's hope these whoever's there is more friendly than the last group we ran into. Mm. Uh, if it's, it's like on the a... other side of the river, at least uh, keep they, the river between yeah. us and them. Yeah, yeah. Too big a horse for a dwarfs. Right. Yeah, yeah, much, too, much, much, much larger than a dwarven horse. <laughs> so, are we going to continue on the river, working our way closer to the horse itself? I don't see any 
movies and Yeah, movies. sure. Let's, I mean, yeah. we're once just walking. Within a, and, mm-hmm. Once you get within about 50 yards or so, you know, the, the horse puts its leg, uh, puts its head up after drinking for a while and, and, and sees you and, and seems agitated. Um, so you can just kind of see him kind of walk backwards a little bit from, from the river um, and just seems seems agitated and confused and kind of walks in a circle a little bit, trying to keep an eye on you during the whole time. I'm not walking towards anywhere, mm-hmm. but, you know, kind of stomping its hooves a little bit. And as you get closer, these are huge saddlebags that are on, on the back of it. And you can also see some armor, um, metal armor on the upper shoulders of, of, this, of this beast. And on its head, it's got kind of an armored plate on, on its nose. I think that horse has a thing against halflings. Look how weird it's getting when I get closer. That's the horse of a soldier of some kind, a, I think. Yeah, like a war horse. It's armored. And yet, you where is animals? its rider? Uh, I need help, I suppose. It's across the river. How How wide is the river? Uh, river itself, um, we're, roughly where this horse is, it's only about twenty feet across, um, so not, not mm-hmm. too bad. Um, no, no sense, and it's not a raging river by any stretch of the imagination. Of course, you can't see how deep it is in the mm. center. Um, I mean, to a halfling, every river's deep. That's a good point. <laughs> That's a good point. Mm. Maybe this is a, some of those things we should just leave as it is. I mean, well, if I were an armored person, I would not want someone messing with my horse. But well, why would you leave your horse behind? Mm, uh, and last time we went to go look at something on the road, it was an ambush. That is true. Well, but we can see pretty well on the other side of that. I mean, is there like an ambushy spot around there or is it pretty no, clear that there's nobody no, around? It's all planes behind this horse. Um, so as far as you can see, and you can see at least, you know, five, 600 yards um, to the south, southeast, southwest, and there's nothing, uh, just just plains and rolling hills. You don't even see, you know, uh, patches of trees or anything where, where something could potentially be hiding. And, and, and like I said, the, the horse is, is just agitated. It's not running from you. It's yeah. not going anywhere. Um, it seems to be kind of staying within about a 10, 15 foot radius and stopping its feet. And a- as you're getting closer, you're now directly across, um, looking across the river at this horse. And it's obviously keeping an eye on you. Um, you see, you see blood stains on, on the saddlebags. Oh, geez. Well, seems to me that if the rider's alive, he'll want some help. And if he's not... Nobody else is going to want what's in those saddlebags. Uh, that's true, but, uh, well, if, if it's an animal trained for war, it might be dangerous getting close to it. And uh, we got to be careful if we take anything from, uh, from that horse. You know, la- last thing we need is going to the next town and them recognizing the horse or accusing us of killing its rider wouldn't put it you know, wouldn't be the first thing something like that has happened with our luck sure so, but if yeah. there's blood we might be able to train it back to wherever the rider was i like that way of thinking more so I'll, I'll try and ford the river no this is on you guys i'm better with people than horses <laughs> uh, i mean i'm not any good with animals i can't put an arrow in but... yeah we'll try and you know, how horses hard are pretty smart all right, so um, I'm gonna uh, so you're gonna try to uh, work your work your way across, Osric. Yes. Um, I'd like I'd like a mic roll, um, to kind of might. just okay. keep keep yourself um under control to let the river not yeah. getting ahead of you. Sure. Let's see. Uh, okay, here we go. Oh yeah. Ooh. Uh, Got so it. You, mm-hmm. Go into the river and knee deep. It's about waist deep now. Um, the horse doesn't seem to be shying away, doesn't seem to be running away, but but is again continue, still agitated and bothered. You know, winning its head, making noises. Um, 
at its deepest, you're about in the center of the river now. It's about shoulder deep. Uh, so you're, you're guessing with, with your height, maybe five foot um, at this part of the river. You start fording your way across. As you get closer to the other side, to the horse's side of this, um, you can clearly see the blood. You can see, see the saddlebags. You can see the armor. The armor has been damaged. It's not brand new armor. And the horse is very reluctant and is kind of trying to maintain a good 15, 20 feet between you and him as you move closer. He's not running away. Um, mm -hmm. He's not being aggressive, mm -hmm. but he seems very intent on keeping, you know, kind of a 15 foot uh, space Distance. between you and him. Yeah. All right. So I'll start, you know, trying to speak to the horse in a soothing tone, trying to get it used to the sound of my voice. You know, easy there, fella. Where's your rider? Just trying to help. And so, you know, softly and, and you know, uh, trying uh, to, to calm it as I approach. Osric's a big guy with a heart of gold, you know. Oh, he's a, he's, he's a beautiful man. Beautiful man. Um, Osric, this will be an animal handling, and I'm going to remind you of your human skill. So if you think that there's exactly. an, another yes. base skill that you think you could use, and all you have to do is just explain to me how instead of, what is animal handling based off of empathy? Uh, empathy it yeah. goes off of empathy. So I'm going to try survival, right? Because I know this. I mean, I'm treating this horse like a, instead of like a plow horse, I'm treating this horse like a dangerous predator, right? In the, and it's something I would find in the woods, right? So trying to stalk know. it as much as calm it, maybe. Well, calm it, but you know, keeping my distance and maybe, yeah, I guess, I guess that would be the. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with that. I'm good with that. So go yeah. ahead and spend your willpower. Yep. And, and let's do a survival. So survival. Here we go. Uh. Uh oh, oh yeah! No, you I don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nervous there for a second. Yeah. Have, have you noticed when you look at the rolled dice, you never see the six first. Doesn't matter yeah. where it is. You're yeah, like the skull. skulls are big and the you sixes are tiny. Yeah. <laughs> so, right. Osric, as you as you're moving closer, it, it is it's still agitated, but it's it's now letting you get closer to it. Um, you work your way up, kind of put your hand out. And, and it's it's letting you touch its touch its face, uh, but it, it's still agitated. But it is it's not not moving. It's you can feel it like and when you touch his skin, you you can feel him. He, he's shaking. Oh, okay. um, and you know, having been around horses and stuff, is by no means are you an animal handler. Right. Um, but that's nerves. Uh, so, so it's I, not I, like he's cold or anything. So I check my pack to see if among the provisions we have, we have any dried fruit. That I can I can give to this animal to sort of definitely. Let's do a quick food roll. Um, and let's pull out um, pull out an apple. Here we go. Beautiful. So you pull an apple out of your bag, and and as soon as you do, um, it, it it's disposition changes and it and it's very anxious. It's not trying to bite you. It's not being aggressive. But it is it, it consumes the apple very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, it would appear that we have a hungry horse on our hands. Right. So I uh, I start signaling with my with my arm to, to like like you know come over to this side to the other guys. And you know I'm, I'm patting the horse, but I'm also looking at the ground, see if I can get a sense of direction because this animal has been in combat. So whatever it is, it's fleeing from something. You know, other woods around or, or anything there isn't um you, so you can see the hooves right and it, mm -hmm. and and unfortunately however long this horse has been here um it's made all kinds of hoof prints everywhere mm -hmm. um now if you want uh if you want to if we want to try to do a tracking survival we could uh do that or we can wait for sten to come across if you'd rather have I'd, um, I'd wait for for Stan. He's probably better at this. Only thing that worries me is Vasilla. Yeah, Vasilla is going to have a hard problem getting across. And oh, Vasilla yeah. looks over at Aldrich yeah. and goes, <laughs> "Here we go." Hoist. Take back ride. I I will tell you that uh, both both Sten, both Sten and Alder can, can could carry her on 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 your back. Mm. You said the words might roll earlier, which make Sten kind of uncomfortable. Well, and I, whoever and whoever's, whoever's carrying her is going to be at a minus one. Mm -hmm. 
on their might roll. I can still probably make that. Okay. So who wants to do my first might roll? Well, um, being human and all, um, I'm not a particularly strong man, but I have spent a lot of time in the woods and I've had to get across streams and such here and there. So I think if I were to make this as a survival roll by spending a willpower. I like it. Let's spend that willpower. Let's get the most out of these talents. I like it. Exactly. I mean, I've got all this willpower for all those horrible failures earlier. So <laughs> we're good. All right. So, Sten, you're able to ford your way across, and you're not quite. I'm imagining you're not quite as tall as Osric, so the mm-hmm. water gets up a little these. bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But um, you're able to get get things across with with keeping what needs to be dry dry above your head mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. as you make your way. And it was really less your strength of with, of withstanding the, the river passing by as much as your footing and being smart about making sure that uh, you, you, you take the correct path uh, across Flow it. Flow like water. Um, Facilla hops onto the back of Aldrich. <laughs> uh, and Aldrich, so you're going to do a might roll, and then yep. uh, you'll do a, at a minus one. All righty. I'm going to get my rope out just in case. <laughs> <laughs> Good call. Ah. <laughs> uh. All right. I'm gonna, so, I'm Aldrich, you start working your way across, and you, you can feel the ground is not nearly as as solid as you would like it to be, and, and you're you're slipping a little bit. Where we, you know, part of part of Vasilla's leg ends up getting into the river, and you're not even not even chest deep yet. Uh, do we want to push this? Yep. Let's go okay. for it. Oh! Oh dear! Uh-oh. Oh dear! <laughs> All right. So we're gonna take uh, two strength. Mm-hmm damage get all that willpower though <laughs> that's the spirit yeah Hooray! Whenever, I need, whenever i need to cast a spell at something it's gonna feel all this rage so what we see is we see Osric keeping keeping our horse calm we see um stan making his way um with his bag bag across you get to the other side you set it down and as you said um as you st- wait wait for Aldrich to start going you've grabbed your rope and you can see See the uh, the two youngins start to work their way into the river, and you see some slipping and some sl- you know. But Alder's doing okay. He's doing okay, and he gets about gets about neck deep. And you see Vasilla kind of hold on to his shoulders <laughs> up there, and then all of a sudden they both go under. Oh, you see hell. them both go down. Uh oh. And Uh-oh. immediately you can now see Aldrich's feet, and he's 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 laying on his back. You start to see him fail. You see a uh, flail. You see uh, Vasilla now being taken by the current um, as she starts heading uh, down river as well. Oh, no. oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, um, I'm going to, um, to try and, uh, I don't know if, if they look conscious and aware enough, I'm going to like take one into the rope. I'm going to uh, yell to uh, uh, yell. Osric, give me a hand here and just sort of throw the rope out in the direction of, uh, of Aldric and see if he's yeah. awake enough to catch it. And I'll try. I and... like it. I like it. Let's take a quick look. Um, definitely a marksmanship. I'd when when you say. Uh, I wouldn't argue with it. Yeah. So what I'm thinking is a marksmanship on your part, and then I would <laughs> like either one that's going to try to grab the rope. Um, I think that that will be a sleight of hand. So let's start with the marksmanship, and depending okay. any, and let's do this. Anything above, if you any extra successes, will add dice to their mark, uh, okay. sleight of hand. That sounds good. Um, would I get the gear bonus from the rope? You definitely will. Okay. Then off we go. With an extra success. Beautiful. So nice. um, each of I need a sleight of hand from both mm-hmm. Vasilla as well as from Aldrich, and you guys are going to add one from that extra success with the incredible awesome. accuracy. From uh, Sten's throwing of the rope. Archer and cowboy. <laughs> Yeehaw. <laughs> All right, here we go. There's nice. The successes. So Alder grabs the rope. Oh, no. Priscilla, oh, you, you no! try to grab the rope. The rope fl- goes through your hand. Uh-huh. You're you're now coming down river, and you have an opportunity if you it. want. Oh, you want to push it? Okay. Okay. Yes. And you grab, Last you, possible. you grab Aldrich's belt. Um, so now we got Aldrich's got the rope. You've got his belt. And Sten starts pulling. And it doesn't take much pulling for you to Aldrich to get your feet back under you. Um, Vasily, you work your way up back onto Aldrich's back and uh, safely 
to the other side of the river. Yeah. Well, I needed a bath anyways. Oh, my back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm anchoring the rope as well, so I'll give yeah. you a hand with that. <laughs> awesome. Um, excellent. Uh, can uh, we get a short break? That's, yeah, I was uh, just going to say yeah. this might be a good time to... to take five for a bio break yeah let's do this right? let's go ahead and t- let's go ahead and take a quick uh five minutes um and w- we'll come back uh nick you want to flip us over to the starting soon and um what you can do is you can uh go to you go to the ghostly timer change the timer from 15 to 5 save it and then tell it to start
right. Welcome back from our little break. Uh, while we were there, uh, we got a nice sub from Old Slow Tiger. So Old Slow Tiger, appreciate the sub. Uh, we also, I saw, a, I saw a follow come through as well, and I appreciate that. So cutting us back, uh, we have uh, four wet uh, travelers, uh, mm -hmm. but we now have what essentially is, for lack of a better word, a, a war horse that Osric at this point has calmed down uh, to a point. Um, I wouldn't say that it is uh, completely, you know, sedate uh, by any stretch of the imagination. Um, the sense you get Osric is trying to get on this horse would probably not be the smartest thing. No. <laughs> um, but that's this is where we are. Mm-hmm. Uh, Stan, uh, uh, now that uh, Vasila and Aldrich are out of the of the water, uh, see if you can make sense of these hoofprints. Uh, this animal has been in some sort of fight. Something, mm -hmm. some its rider must have gotten killed or at least injured. See, see if we can pick up a trail. Maybe we can help him. Yeah, looking at the horse, Sten's not getting particularly close to it, but does it look like the horse was wounded at all, or is it just blood from... Okay, good. Because um, no, no, if horse... anything bad happened to a horse, my girlfriend would kill me. So. <laughs> yeah, no, the horse <laughs> the, hor the horse seems fine. I mean, as best as you can tell, not being animal handlers necessarily, mm -hmm. but as best as you can tell, he's hungry, um, uh, and he's he's his nerves are shot. Um, is kind of your... your um, unprofessional opinion sure he's not not wounded at all no yeah. okay um yeah i'll certainly see if i can backtrack the the track see where it came from sure let's go ahead and do a survival roll i will do that thing it's my my apex skill it is what you do sir sure do yeah. sure do so as best as you can tell um you see all kinds of activity all types of hoof prints um, you're able to, you know, get down to the ground, Sten, and, and work it out. And you then find that the way the horse got here was from the northeast. Um, so you're on the very south bank of, of this river, and it appears that it was traveling along the south bank uh, from the northeast. Mm. All right. Um, well, well that just that's the direction we were going yeah. anyway, exactly. Let's uh, let's try and follow him along. And okay, so does, we wanna... does the horse seem kind of willing to go back that way? Uh, I, I well, talk to me. So what? So, so I want to look at the uh, at the saddlebags right now that that the horse is uh, more calm. Right, I'm still patting it and sort of you know take a peek at one of the bags and see what what it is. Bless you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so. Um... You were, you, um, you're able to kind of rummage through the bags themselves. Um, you do find a rations. So one of you can go ahead and up your rations by one. Who needs it? Who's, I, I, mean, I got I'm, at, I'm at D6 right now. So. Oh, you're I'm allergic to horses. Yeah, I'm at eight. So <laughs> right. All right, then I will, I will stash that in my bags. Thank you. Um, again. and then Osric, there's, you know, a, a bad roll, things like that stuff that, um, you already have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, but you do reach in and you pull out this gorgeous, what looks like a headband, a silver headband. And it's got a sigil on it. It's a sigil of two lions um, matched up into each other. And the, there's the letters, <laughs> letters below it of L-A-V-I-D-E, Levide. And it looks looks like a sigil, right? And Levide, you would assume, is the family name, um, mm -hmm. matching the sigil. Um, but this is this is a nice nice little piece of uh, headband. Um, so I'm going to quickly move it over into your inventory. Okay. Give me just a second. There we are. As you're doing that. Uh, Osric, you know, you're petting him, you're reaching into the bags. He doesn't seem to have any issues with you going in the bags, though his nose starts nuzzling mm -hmm. onto your bag again where you pulled the apple out of. <laughs> I mean, if, if I have something, I'll certainly try and feed the horse something to keep him busy while Osric's doing that. Yeah, so you, you, you pull out an you apple know, as well. Sen's kind of doing this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, so go ahead and do a food roll for me, and let's go ahead and uh, with my, give our host. With my new and improved food roll. Sorry about that. It's all right. Immediately get apples, immediately feed horse apples. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's a horse. I'm going to feed them all the apples. So the horse the horse senses your trepidation mm -hmm. and uh, what he did not sense from Ostrich. So he he's a little bit more cautious as he puts his nose up and kind of nibbles. And then as soon as he realizes it's going to okay, just, just mm -hmm. pulls the apple into his mouth and chomp, chomp, chomp. Back said, you've pulled the silver band out of out of yours are you are you keep i put it on your gear and i just assumed you were going to keep this band i didn't i shouldn't have done uh, that do you want to keep it on the horse or uh, i'll i'll give it to i'll give it to vasilla okay I'll say, can, can you make something out of this i mean if it looks pretty expensive Whoever it belongs to is probably going to want it back. So we should maybe keep it in order to give it back to the person because they're going to come looking for something like this. Yes, um, yes, I agree. And then she goes back to like trying to get all the water out of her loot, which she's very angrily like oh, trying to. No. Like... <laughs> oh, no. She's going to be mad at me. <laughs> so she's she's side-eyed. We need to you. get you a waterproof she's... case for that. Uh, so can you, can you hold on to this? It's a... Um... Yeah, yeah. Up, uh, as long as we don't go back in any more rivers, we'll keep it safe. <laughs> I went ahead and moved it over uh, to Vasilla's gear. Um, after eating the apple, our horse uh, goes back over to, to drink from the river um, uh, to kind of wash down and then puts his head up and turns and looks to you, Osric, and just kind of makes eye contact for a moment and then, in a gallop, starts heading northeast. Oh! <laughs> um, uh... Maybe it's leading us to where we need to go. Well, let's, I don't let's, know that we can keep up with it, but but at least we'll we can track it. Head that way, sure. <laughs> All right, so we'll go into the. Um, we're still in the. Uh, go go into the second quarter of the day. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and bring up the party sheet. Let's make our assignments. I think are we probably just keeping. I think we're all still way. good. Yeah. Great. Yeah. About one Vasilla takes a minute to catch up with the rest of them because she's still trying to dry out her stuff. Mm -hmm. Looks up, realizes they've taken <laughs> off, taken off, and is like, "Oh, dang it!" <laughs> <laughs> and she's very not very stealthy. She is now banging and clinging around again because all of her stuff is not tied down. This is is not ag, ag, uh, exactly Aragorn, Legolas, and Ghibli running across the country. So <laughs> <never>. No. <laughs> All right, I'm ready for a survival or a uh, lead the way as well as a. I will uh, do that watch. thing. Oh, God. So nice. I am leading such the way. <laughs> you sure are. <laughs> and let's see if I can match that. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Pretty close. Pretty close. Keep an eye on that horse. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So you. Come after the horse. Now, are we, I mean, even running, you would have a hard time keeping up with the galloping horse. So are we going to try to run and really push ourselves as we, as we do this? Or what's kind of the game plan here? I, I'm comfortable enough following the tracks. I'm an old man. I don't need to run. Yeah, I think we follow. I mean, we're, that horse has got to get tired at some point, so we'll catch up to it. <laughs> or at least that's somewhere. what we think. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Uh, I don't know about horses, maybe. <laughs> so you, you work... Uh, you, Craig, sorry, yeah. just to, to check. Should we be on the other side of the river now? Um, I'm, assu I'm assuming um, that, you're, that you're staying right on the south bank of the river, but, right. um, well, let's do this. Let's put you down here. How does that sound? Okay, uh, yeah, that's know. what I was thinking. Okay, great. Cool. Um, and little did you know, it was named the Alaya River. <laughs> no, it just sort of popped into my mind. We can read it on the other bank there. <laughs> the Got it. It's nice to have those signs up for us. Yeah, it's really. It's like the Hollywood <laughs> sign. <laughs> so as you're continuing and keeping a good pace, but not running, not exerting yourselves necessarily, the horse. You see the horse kind of get beyond your, your sight, but it stayed on the river the whole time. Um. And Sten has no trouble following the tracks. Um, so even though you're you're not going to necessarily catch up uh, to our war horse, 
tracking the warhorse uh, and following it uh, shouldn't be too much of a difficult uh, venture. What was our keep watch? Uh, two successes. Two successes. Um, so now I'm imagining kind of mid-afternoon, uh, around one-ish or so. You're continuing down the river. Oddly, uh, both uh, Aldrich and, and Basilla not really walking along as close to the bank of the river as they did earlier in the day. <laughs> they seem to be keeping a little bit more of a distance between themselves and the river um, as you guys are now continuing on uh, through. Uh, you see the river curve start heading south. Um, Aldrich, um, as you and Sten are up ahead, um, I would say roughly 150, 200 yards away, you can see a buck. And Sten, you see it pretty quickly as well. And Sten, because of your background, this is without question the largest deer you've ever seen. I mean, it's a good 150 yards away, and it's enormous. And it's got this huge 12, 14 point buck. Oh, look at that. And it's standing on the south, south bank of the river. It's not drinking. It's standing there and it's looking directly at where you are. Um, it's hard to tell whether it saw you first or you saw it, but you now see each other. Um, I mean, that would, that would feed us well for several days. Um, it's good meat. It is. Um, I mean, well, um, he's certainly out of bow shot now, so I guess continue in that direction. Um, maybe I'll signal these guys to let me take a little bit of a lead, get out in front. Smart. Um, so in case I don't startle it, maybe they won't either. So you continue forth. Um, are we pulling the bow? Um, like I yeah, said, were... I want to ha have it ready for sure. And you are by no means in range, right? Right, at this exactly. Point. Exactly. Um, and you guys continue your travels, um, continuing on. And the biggest thing that you notice, Sten, is this buck is deliberately staying out of range. <laughs> and here's what's here's what's truly odd about it is as you're walking, it kind of walks at the same pace mm -hmm. up the river, constantly looking back. And if it, at some point, I would imagine, you know, you stop, um, you know, for whatever reason, just to catch your breath or whatever, it stops as well. So it's deliberately keeping the same distance. Is it moving in roughly the same direction as the horse, or is this going it's staying away? along the south bank of the river? Um, so yes, um, and now you've traveled in parallel to each other, in tandem to each other, with this distance long enough that you're now seeing the track stand now uh, uh, of this buck, and. Sten, it, it, it's at least 50% larger than any buck tracks you've ever seen. I mean, it, it, as best as you can imagine, at its shoulders, this thing could be six foot tall. Okay. And, which is, you know, huge. It's In like my experience, abnormally yeah. large. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so, it's so, the Shaquille O'Neal of bucks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> So Stan is going to kind of pause for a minute. I mean, obviously, a lot has happened in the past 300 years. Maybe they just grow them big down here. But um, it's obviously, if not smart, at least it has experience with hunters before. And it's also big enough that I don't feel real confident that a single arrow would take it down. So after, after just kind of staring at it for another minute, he's just going to kind of put the arrow back and unstring the bow and, and put it over his shoulder again. And, and when you do that, it, it's watching you very closely. Mm -hmm. And it then starts to close the distance. Not in an aggressive way. Okay, that was um, my first question. <laughs> but it, it's moving and it, and it would walk maybe 15, 20 yards towards you mm -hmm. and it would stop and it would flick its head in its rack. Like, like come here? <laughs> yep. And then it would, and then it would kind of walk backwards, a little okay. bit. And then if you start to follow it, then it kind of oh. turns and maintains the distance, and continues on. Sure, I'll follow it. What could possibly go wrong? 
can uh, can we, we can we see Sten? I mean, are we following? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm oh, still, yeah. Or? I'm not yeah, that yeah, far okay. away ahead. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, cool, cool. Um, so now I, I'm assuming, Craig, just because it seems to be kind of a constant in most cultures that there are myths of some kind about you know the right kings there. of various types of animals and what have you. So that's that's kind of you know he's not saying anything, but that's kind of what he's got going on in the back of his mind because we've already seen that the dead walk. So at this point, anything is possible. Mm -hmm. um, and, and at one at one point, mm -hmm. um, you get close enough. Um, I'm going to say within 75 yards, but I, I can't emphasize enough how deliberate this deer is being mm -hmm. about maintaining a distance. But well, let's say it gets within about 50, 75 yards of you, uh, which is the closest to let's go. And, I, and I'm imagining maybe you guys sat at the edge of, of the river, you know, to take a break because this is hours passing sure. as, you, as you continue this dance with this buck. Um, it has yellow eyes. Um, so everything about the buck looks normal but larger. <laughs> Uh -huh. but it has yellow eyes almost luminescent um so light is not coming out of the eyes but it's a uh -huh. bright yellow eye and you just catch a glimpse of it right because you're not that close to it um but that is something that you that you do pick up on right and i would say to the others because i figure we've we've caught up and are traveling together again by this point uh, that ain't a regular deer offering mm -hmm. his profound insight you know? there's certainly some odd behavior yeah mm. All right, you want to head head to the uh, southeast here? Sure. All right. Let Stand us con trail. continue. This is the kind of adventure I can get behind. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me get my rolls. All righty. Do I get a bonus for following the deer? Ah, uh, yeah, <laughs> I like that. Let's do a little plus one action. All right, fair enough. Nice. Because it clearly knows where it's going. Oh, and don't. it's not helping me at all. <laughs> um, but I tell you what, um, because I am, I have the path of the forest. Uh, I'm just going to spend a willpower point to succeed. At that. Good for you. Good for you. So that's one of your talents. It allows you to, for those watching, it allows you to spend a willpower to automatically succeed a lead the way, right? Yep. Forage hunt or lead the way. It's pretty cool. Very nice. All right. Here's my keep watch. But it appears I am distracted by the deer. Yes. That's, that's, that's a big deer. But I will go ahead and push. There's only one one skull. He says. <laughs> there we go. Good job. Besides, you want to collect all the willpower, right? Yeah. I'm getting right. close. I'm almost full. <laughs> Take that one with damage. So you, you continue on. Um, a few things. Um, Sten, you, you can't see this necessarily but looking at the landscape and uh the way the winds are going the smell in the air uh you can tell there's definitely a body of water to the south um of where you are a good but it, you would venture to guess based off of what you're looking at a good four five six miles maybe south okay. of this river here um otherwise everything is uh, you know as as it has been before the deer keeping its distance as you work towards it we're looking at about three four o'clock in the afternoon at this point um you're not sure when it happens, um, but the distance gets farther and eventually the deer gets out of sight. Um, and any attempts to speed up only causes the deer to speed up. Um, uh, but the, the deer breaks, breaks distance and eventually leads out of sight. But again, no trouble with tracks, no trouble between, between the war horse and the, um, the deer itself, uh, the buck. So they're still headed in pretty much the same direction. Still following the river. So in this case, right now, heading east um, okay. along the river itself. Um, I would be uh, curious, though, um, as all these hours have passed, um, I would be curious to know um, any thoughts. Um, I'd be curious to know discussions uh, <laughs> about everything that's happening between the war horse, between the deer. Um, where's everybody's head? <laughs> So Vasilla has gotten over being dunked by Alderk, and she kind of looks at it at some point and is like, are we really following animals? I mean, at this point, like we're going this way anyways. It just, it's a little odd. At least it's a little, well, the, the war horse is a sign of civilization. 
at the very at the very much least because it does have armor. Uh, the the deer is just but weird. Rider, so. That deer looks like it could take us all out. I'm just saying that's a that's a big animal. One wonders if it took out the, the horse's rider before it met us. Uh, could be, I suppose. It's a very it's odd not... scenario, but certainly possible. Then she'll, she'll kind of speak up just then. Have you ever seen a deer not just run away when someone comes near it? Not if it saw saw me coming. Uh, there's there's something something odd about that deer to be sure. It's smarter than a deer has any right to be. For sure. Hmm. Maybe it's a spirit. We've already seen the dead walking. I no <laughs> longer going I'm going to bet. Past anything. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm no longer willing to bet uh, against anything. So let's, let's see what it has. So as you continue along the banks of the river, um, heading along to the south, um, Aldrich and Sten, you see what you'd venture to guess is maybe 10, 15 people, 10 or 15 people walking in a line, um, a procession of some sort. Um, as best as you can tell from where the distance is right now, uh, they're all wearing black. Um, they're walking slowly and they appear to be walking single file. They have not noticed you um, at this point, but you do see them. And, and they're, they're headed west. In... Okay. Okay. Hmm. Does it look like they're? Uh, it, it's just the people. They don't. They look like they're carrying anything, or because I mean, it, the the initial instinct I get would be like a funeral procession, but there's not yeah. like a body or anything there. So you do hear a few things. One, um, you hear what it sounds like are whips, right? So, ka-ch, ka-ch. And there's a drum being played, though, at this distance, um, without getting closer and, and being in and potentially noticed, which I'm going to assume right now we're not doing. Uh-huh. Um, it's hard to tell where the drum beat is coming from, but it sounds like one drum uh, is being uh, being hit. And there seems to be some sort of, of chanting. Hmm. So you can hear, you can't make it out. Um, yeah. And immediately, I'm assuming everybody kind of dropped right yeah. to the ground to, yeah. to stay out of sight. Yeah, if they're slavers, they might always be looking for more. Yeah, or they're all wearing black, and the last fella we saw wearing a black outfit was that Russ fella. That's true. Oh, Could be more of more them, potentially. We not want to mess with them. Especially that many. You say we keep our distance. I agree. That uh, seems wise. Yeah, uh, we've we've got enough to keep us busy right now. I don't know that I want to. You're well hidden at this point, um, but they are closer, um, so you're getting a little bit more detail. Uh, there appears to be a woman um, at the front. They're all hooded in black uh, cloaks, and the whipping. It appears over half of them have these whips, mm-hmm. and as best as you can tell, they're whipping themselves. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's so you see them and the drum doom, 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 doom. Is there anything I could determine from the chanting through like a lore roll or something? Ooh, I like that. Mira Priscilla, one of us could probably try to determine yeah, something. Check out the big yeah. brain on the educated. Yeah, people. I'd be, I, I would allow a lore roll. Vasil, would you like to do the honors, or do you want me to? I can do it. Go for it. When things load up, there we go. Very nice. Very good. Um, And that was uh, Vasila. So, Vasila, it's not your native tongue, but it is it's close right it's close enough so imagine imagine somebody who is uh portuguese hearing an italian speak right or someone who knows spanish hearing an italian speak you know you can pick up words right you pick pick up and piece things together and you hear them talking about the mist there's something about the mist in this chant um uh, something about salvation and as, as best as you can tell, uh, like, 
the end. So these these are the times. The mist will return. Salvation is coming. I'll, I'll kind of turn to that. I think these people are crazy. <laughs> like I think they're there's some kind of weird cult. That. Yeah, the the whips were like, a pretty good sign. I don't I don't uh I don't imagine we want to interact with them. They're they're I can't make it out, but they're talking about the mists coming back and like salvation and no one wants that. So <laughs> I'd say like, let them go on about their business. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I I'm I'm not keen to interact with them. Um and again and if they were talking about like cookies, then yeah. <laughs> And Vasila, again, this, this is definitely not not the native your native tongue, uh, but close. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it be an old dialect or just a different dialect, it's hard to tell. The other thing that's that you pick up is um, related to a, some sort of metal bird, and that the metal bird will bring the salvation. Oh, I'll, I'll look over to Alder. Do you know anything about? I'll stop and listen for a second, and I'll be like, yeah, metal birds? I mean, we have Rust Brothers to call the Raven Rust as an alternate name, name scheme, so maybe there's a metal mm. bird, rusted bird for the Raven. Maybe? That's that's mm. what I'm getting. That's the closest word. Well, if they're attached to that, I definitely don't want anything to do with them. <laughs> yeah, that's, I'm, I would assume they're with whatever organization that other fellow was with. So they're in no hurry. Um, I'm assuming we're staying still to, to remain unnoticed and they work their way west. Um, not following the river, headed more southwest um, than where you came from, the north northwest. Uh, eventually get to the point where you, you feel safe. Um, but it takes it takes a good bit of time. Uh, we'll go ahead and enter into the second uh, the third quarter of the day. So you know, roughly six six thirty ish mm -hmm. uh, time wise. Um, but if the goal is to let them pass unmolested, then they pass unmolested. Yep, that's my plan certainly. Yes. Definitely. You have no trouble kind of working your way back uh, closer to the south bank of our uh, Alaya River, as we now know it's called. And um, we have no trouble picking up the tracks again of our buck and our warhorse. I think you guys need one more thing to track. Do you have any ideas? Uh, like a very small rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> Make it hard. Well, we can track the pilgrims backward. No, let's not do that. Please don't. So, Please don't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's so, a mosquito buzzing around. Let's track that. Uh, this is the third quarter of the day now. So Yeah. Getting a little late. Yeah. So I think we need to make our camp. You And you can do that in the next hack. So if you guys want to move a hack, you can still do that within this quarter day. Yeah. Yeah, let's that do that. Good. All right. Yeah, so we're going to head distance. northeast. Yeah. All right. Can I get my rolls? Ooh. Ooh, heading to a river delta. Very exciting. <laughs> All righty. Uh, leading the way. Huh. Huh. Well, I hate to do it. I'll just spend the willpower again. Make sure I succeed. Yeah. Smart. Right. Where, where yeah. are you? I, just a quick willpower check. Where is everybody on willpower? I'm at one now. I got one. Alder? Nine. <laughs> <laughs> well, where's all the fancy magic, mister? Look, I don't I haven't had anything to cast on. Just I'm building it up. I'm building up. But the he's power. ready. <laughs> Vasily, do you have any willpower? Yeah. Two. two. I've got two. Yeah, I've got two. Alright. Alright, this is my keep watch. Yep. Successful. Okay. Very nice. I was gonna get my tenth willpower. So you got you continue um into uh following it and as you can see on the map we see the river opening up into kind of a marshland um to the north so uh still traveling and the water's still moving to the east but much slower um into a, into a delta um which doesn't take any doesn't take too much of a boy scout 
uh, degree to kind of figure out that it's, you know, we're, we're leading to a, an opening up to a, a much larger body of water um, it, it, as best as you can tell. And uh, should we go ahead and take this quarter day and um, do our, do our routine? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, I think otherwise we're going to be traveling in the dark, right? If we try and continue following yeah. these things. Yeah. So let's not do that. All right, so let's go ahead and go to our sheet. So instead of me keeping watch, because I'm not good at it, <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe Vasilla should should keep watch, right? Vasilla can, yeah, I can keep watch. And I'll try to fish, I suppose. There's water nearby, right? So, yeah, you could definitely fish in the marshlands. There's there's places okay. to fish. So I'll. I'll try fishing for a bit, and then the next, the next quarter I'll be sleeping, I suppose. Yeah. Um, Stan, are you making camp? And Aldrich, yep. same thing. Aldrich, Aldrich third, uh, fourth, third shift. Okay. Yep. So you you move over to sleep. Aldrich to uh, setting up camp. No, Stan's making up. Setting up or camp. Stan, I'm sorry. Or, yeah, yeah, exactly. All yep. right, cool. Da -da -da. And two from the tent. No problem. Beautiful. And I nice am dry going spot. to fish. Yeah, let's see the fish and the keep watch. Did I get it? Uh, you got a thing. Yeah. You sure did. You sure did. So that's going to give you that. That's going to give you uh, one food. Okay. Um, so one of you will not need to roll for food. Okay. For today. How are we at food? Everybody at eight? Uh, I'm at eight right now. Yeah. So I think you might as well enjoy the fruits of your labors, or the fish either, of your labors. Either that, or I could cook it. Uh, Ooh, that's true. Cooking the rest, better. and then I could actually make it provisions. Go for it, yeah. No, I like so. the sound of that. You could do that overnight. Uh, so yeah. you could do that as far as, as far as the third shift goes. And that's our keep watch um, from Fox. So we are, we are in very good shape. So Alder goes to bed. Um, we see uh, Osser come back from the marshlands to the north, kind of working his way up, and he's got a line of fish um, hanging there. A very successful fishing trip. Uh, we see uh, Sten setting up the tent, um, getting the fire going, um, setting the kettle. Um, let's go ahead and have uh, the four of you do a water as well as a, a food roll. Okay. Uh, my provisions are holding out. What is it that we don't want to roll? A one or a two. A one, one or a two. two. Okay. All right. So, Brian and a lawyer set. Nate's yep. good on food. All right. And then I just need Vasilla. Yep. Yeah. Give me one sec. I'm trying to pull the. Is that on uh, the gear? um party sheet gear. or is that on the personal Age of your sheet? Personal sheet. Gear page. Hold on. We got food and water. All right, no trouble whatsoever. Um, start to settle in. Uh, the tent is up, fire started, darkness is starting to fall. We're getting to eight, nine o'clock at night. <coughs> We've got, of course, uh, Aldrich sleeping away. Um, Sten. As you kind of, or actually, no, Osric, as you were up there fishing, um, you went a little bit farther north in, into the marshlands themselves to catch the fish. Um, to the north, you would venture to guess maybe four miles or so, you saw backlit against the, 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 the faint moonlight some sort of very tall mountainous structure. So it looked like some sort of some sort of mountain breaking for the first time, really the, 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 the horizon itself, but also a structure among it. And there was light coming from the very top of it. Hmm. Very faint, several miles away. Um, nothing that it would take, you know, it would take you uh, several hours, not several, but at least two, three hours to get a much closer look. Um, but as you come back with the fish, and get them set up so that uh, Aldrich can cook them. 
uh, you relate this to, to everybody that to the north on the other side of it looks appear on the other side of these marshlands that there um there could be something it's a very large house or perhaps it's what the stories describe as a tower or a castle or a keep fascinating and was there a princess in it i have no idea but there was a light single light though seems strange for a large dwelling to have only a single light and Sten, the tracks of both the deer and the horse lead into the marshlands, which is when you lose them. Right. Ah. Well, drat. But they appeared to go north. Okay. Well, um, I mean, at first glance, I'm certainly not going to go poking around tonight, but does it look like the marshlands are shallow enough that the horse might have been able to navigate them? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Osric reported back as far as, you know, as what he did mm -hmm. is find, finding the fish. Um, I think at the worst, Osric, it got maybe knee deep uh, in kind of water and mud and gook. Um, but traveling north won't be, won't be too difficult. Um, well, maybe that's where the horse came from. Yes. Could be. We should go see. In the morning. <laughs> yes. I Dumb. agree. I am turning A lot of walking today. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so around the campfire, uh, Vasilla's playing her lute. Um, Aldrich gets up, and you guys have, a, you know, about an hour when the four of you are awake before the three of you kind of doze off, and Aldrich starts cooking the fish. And uh, we move into, you know, midnight, one o'clock. Aldrich is keeping watch on things, cooking up these fish. And we will be able to move ourselves over to morning. So it's about 6 a.m. The sun starts to rise. Aldrich, uh, the, the smell of the fish that Aldrich's been cooking is the first thing that you smell. Um, that means that somebody can upgrade their dye. Uh, so whoever wants to upgrade, whoever needs to upgrade a food dye, who's, who wants to take this the, the cooked dried fish? Are we all at eights? I think we're all at D8s, yeah. All right. Uh, let's give it to Osric since he's the one who caught it. Here's your catch, sir. Okay. Lovely. Nicely cooked. Excellent. All right, so let's go up to a D10. Start to break down camp. Put out the fire. Looks like it was kind of dying on its own anyway. Um, make some tea. Kind of enjoy, enjoy a, an hour or two in the morning. Weather-wise, um, cloudy, uh, a little bit chilly, chillier than it was the day before. Um, before, you were kind of that, you know, take my jacket off, and after you've been walking for a while, you yeah. kind of took your jacket off. And But this morning is is chilly. The jackets are definitely staying on. Sure. Well, I feel like a, a cold marsh is probably better than a warm marsh, so I have no <laughs> idea what that means. <laughs> You know what a warm marsh means? Mosquitoes. Exactly. Yeah, there you go. From what I've heard. Can, mm -hmm. So, Astra, if you saw that tower, is it possible we could use that as some sort of landmark if we're trying to go into this? Like, are we trying to go into this marsh? That's where the animals we're following went. I mean, we don't have any other path to follow, and that's, you know, if we're here looking for, for towns and settlements, it seems like something we should at least get a closer look at. We might find the owner of the horse. Certainly. Maybe. I'm just a little concerned with, you know, places where water could be deeper than not big into the water so far. <laughs> you have a your connection struggle in there, Fox. Yeah. <laughs> we picked up a good bit of it though. Um uh, well, okay. I mean uh Osric's fairly stout. Maybe he should uh, give you a piggyback ride while we uh, go through some of these areas. I can do that. Uh, that didn't. That didn't work so well last time. <laughs> can um, can she find like a stick, like a staff or sure. something? Okay. And, and and her the whole time we're going through like any time that looks like <laughs> gross, she's basically yeah, just gonna be using it to judge yeah. you know how. Yeah, and you, yeah, and you benefit being considerably lighter than your three uh, traveling partners, so not too much difficulty um, staying above and not sinking nearly as far into the mud, of course, as they are. Um, so it sounds like we're heading north. Is that accurate? 
Yep. Yeah. Got a, right. got a landmark. Let's go ahead and uh, did we do our cooking roll, Nate? We did, right? Uh, I did roll. What do yeah. I roll for cooking? Uh, you should have a cooking skill, right? Uh, I think it's just craft, isn't it? It is craft. You're right. So craft is okay. making That's making cool. all the things. I yeah. have a plus two, I believe, with my cauldron. Oh yeah, but you nice. also have the chef talent. One. So here, right, you can turn up to D six units of vegetables, meat, and fish into food. All right, cooking requires a fire, proper kitchen. Oh, all right. So at rank two, you would create two units of food. That's nice. Yeah. All right. So yeah. So let's go ahead and do a crafting roll, and you're going to get uh, your gear bonus. Sweet. Crafting with a gear bonus. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Lovely. There's that nice fish. Um. Yeah. Someone else can upgrade their die. Yeah, I like. The, I like those two successes. So who who wants to? Who else wants to go up to a D10? Uh, I'll give the other one to Vasilla since I dunked her. All right. <laughs> that seems fair. Bad. That seems fair. Vasilla, let's turn your food into a D10, please. All right. Um, let's go to our party sheet. And let's head let's head north. righty. If anybody else wants to take a turn at leading the way, I'm not I'm not picky about it. I just I have a knack, so I'm happy to keep doing it. But nice. I think they're a huge I think they're a huge fan of your spending a willpower. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're the best happen. one. You're the best one for well, I can only do that once bud. more, so <laughs> all right, fair enough. Yeah. Fair <laughs> we go well Still done got it. and the scout still got it awesome very nice on the key man, watch man. all right so let's head north okay so let me do a couple things here real quick As you work north, as described and uh, discussed by uh, Osric, uh, you start, you see where instead of plains, you start to see it getting rocky um, and eventually large rocks leading up um, into the sky, at least 30, 40 feet um, leading up. Give me just a second. This is this is great. This is close to where our village is actually. Look at mm -hmm. look at the map. It's not that far, honestly. Yeah, yeah. we've come <laughs> full circle. <laughs> so, as you come upon this thing, there's a ridge, and the ridge is all is rocky, and like I said, it's easily 30, 40 feet um, up at times, and the ridge breaks. And it seems, and it's hard to tell, it's hard to tell if this structure was carved or built here. So as the, as the ridge meets, there's a gap and in the center of it, there's this large structure. Fascinating. Ooh. Whoa. Very fascinating. Surrounding the structure, there is like a pond moat type thing, difficult to tell. And as you get closer, it becomes very apparent that this is a living structure, that that this is not just a carved area or a warm, but it was hard to tell as you were approaching it, right? Um, prominently um, closest to you, you can see kind of a, a separate structure and I'll ping it here on the map for you. Looks to be, as best you can tell, maybe a watchtower of some sort. And as you work closer and closer to it, you can see it's whatever this is wasn't built yesterday. It was built a long time ago and probably, probably was not in much better shape back then. So the walls and the areas are overgrown. And it, there's a path leading off to the left. The key that appears to lead to a large doorway to this main huge structure. And then kind of a pathway that crosses across the moat to the right, to this dilapidated, broken down, we'll call it a watchtower. 
You don't notice it at first. But you see flickering coming from inside of this watchtower. A torch or a fire of some sort. Is that the light you saw last night? It might be. Uh, let's let's see who who lives in this castle. I'm assuming there's no other sign of people other than that that light. No, no, okay. and no sign of the deer tracks nor the horse. So well, we should head to the watchtower. Sure, so I'll, we'll get closer, and when we get close enough, I'll. Hail the Watchtower! <laughs> Why not? We're friendly hopefully people. They're, yeah. Hopefully they're friendly. Yes. But Can I make a lore wrong? check to see if I know anything about castles built into? Sure. Music's getting very ominous for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So, Vasilis, you know, you're you're watching and you're looking at this. Um, right. And, you know, there's there's always tales of castles, right? And and really, I think you're the probably the first one as everybody's kind of discussing and kibitzing about this. I think you're the first one to use the C word to say this. This is this could be a castle. Um, and it is old. Um, and as best as you can tell, Vasilis, this is pre missed old. Um, it would not surprise you if it was dilapidated 300 years ago, let alone 50, 100 years ago. Um, you don't have any sense of the history of it or what is it. Um, though there were tales in the town of a castle south, but, you know, there's tales of a lot of things. Um, uh, but you, that rings a bell. You remember people talking about a castle to the south. Of, of Oakenheart. So as you work your way towards to the right, and as I'm narrating this at any point, yell and say, hey, Craig, we'll, 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 <laughs> we want to do something. As you work your way to the right, you see the flickering inside of the watchtower. It's about eight, nine o'clock in the morning at this point. I think uh, probably either Sten or Ostrich picks up on it. You can smell something cooking. Um, in fact, Sten recognizes it immediate. That's rabbit. Hmm. Well, they're not ghosts, whatever they are. <laughs> There's mean, no bells on the doors. Well, they're ghosts <laughs> that need to eat. And it's true. I don't know that much about ghosts. <laughs> but yeah, I mean. So I, I hailed the tower, right? Why wouldn't, why wouldn't how, you? How close do we want to get? Uh, Before we make a noise, I'd get fairly close, right? Yeah, good, good shouting distance. Um, okay, uh, what uh, thirty feet away from that from that door? Sure. So you get 30, 30 feet from the door, and kind of stop and Oscar, you're kind of looking and. Right about as you're about to say, hell, you know, you can, you're like, you, you're taking in the breath. You hear a yell, yell come and interrupt you immediately going, come in. I've got enough for everybody. Well, thank you. Uh, uh, I start walking towards it. Who are you? Come, come. I'm a traveler just like you. Oh. And as you're kind of working your way closer, kind of looking in the door, you can see now the fire. There's a fire that's that whoever this is has built um, into the um, to the ground of, of this watchtower. Uh, it's also clear that based on the sunlight coming in, that uh, the roof of this watchtower at no point is there any floors or anything, and it, it's open to the air itself. In fact, you can see as you get closer, of course, the smoke from this fire coming all the way up through the top of the watchtower itself. You see somebody sitting by the fire. It's hard to tell. Um, doesn't look like a very large person, um, you know, standard build. Uh, they're yelling and, you know, talking, but they have their back to you. Come, I've got enough rabbit. You can see, see him cooking about five rabbits um, being cooked and hung over the fire. And there's just one of him. 
is from where you can tell without getting inside yeah, yeah. yet. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but he's not who he or she is not turning around. Um, is is yelling with their back to you. Um, uh, odd, right? Uh, it, it, it doesn't doesn't feel obviously whoever this is doesn't feel threatened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I stop. I kind of signal for the others to stop. I say hello. Uh, my name is Osric. Uh, you're a traveler as well. Yes, yes, yes. The name is Dalb. I am probably the most talented minstrel in all of Ravenland. Oh. Oh. I invite you, come. I will tell you tales. I will play you music. I will feed you. You're welcome. Please. Kind of look down at Vasilla. <laughs> so I'd be curious, yeah, she's... what's Vasilla's reaction? Because <laughs> I can imagine it could go two ways. I could see Vasilla mm. going, holy cow, I bet he knows a bunch of songs. This would be amazing. And who the hell... <laughs> Right. She's kind of like, she gives Aldrick an eye, like, raises an eyebrow. And then just kind of looks over at Osric and nods, like, you know, let's go. I All guess right. we'll see if he's that good. So I guess we walk in. Oh. Yeah. So you walk in, and you can see this, and Vasily, you notice it. Over, leaned up against the far wall, it is it's a guitar it's not a lute it's just this gorgeous handmade wooden guitar the craftsmanship the the etchings on it you uh, you, you stop in your tracks and just her eyes are this big around yeah like, <laughs> like holy wow wow i mean it's got six strings on it not four <laughs> six wow six she starts counting on her fingers <laughs> stops realizes she, she has another move. hand <laughs> E G. <laughs> what are the other ones? How many cats you have to gut to get that many strings exactly. these days? <laughs> oh. Yeah, she's just not saying. Everyone is moving past her. She's just staring and raptured at this guitar. Like, it, doesn't even make it past the doorway. All the signaling again. Not not in any way, you know, uncomfortable. His body language is very relaxed. Mm -hmm. He's signaling to inviting you to sit around. You mm -hmm. notice that obviously he is tidied this up there's like an area that he's cleared out here um you can tell you know where he pushed uh just worn stones away and kind of created this campsite inside of this area right. um you see the fire burning you can see he's got a pack next to this guitar um leaning up against the wall itself oh the smell of the smell of the uh I, of the rabbit i say five rabbits that's quite a feast you have cooking friend more than enough for everybody here please sit let's talk I, I I love catching up with travelers. Are are you are you part of Eskar's crew? Um, we we know, know nothing of an Eskar. Uh, Vasilla will pipe up. We're from Oakheart. Oakheart, lovely town to the north, is it not? Mm-hmm. Yes. Beautiful town. I have not been there. Uh, been there in a very very long time, I've, but I've always heard always heard good things about the people of Oak uh, of Oakenheart. Well, I suppose stories must have been handed down through the years since the mist has been up. Yes, but you have to remember that some of us, some of us were able to, to, to the mist didn't affect everybody, my friend. It didn't affect everybody. Really? I've, seen mu I've seen much of Ravenland. As you sit down and kind of make yourself comfortable and um, passes plates around and pulls pulls rabbit down and tears them into quarters and you know is putting him on the, the thing uh you know f feeding you um has some sort of stew um cooking in a pot also there vegetable root vegetables and things like that um he says so you're not not part of we're not part of the farthing party then i figured you were no, stragglers they got here they were here last night no, we're just uh, kinda... packed up and packed up and headed in this morning. I don't know what that means. The farthing party, Tre treasure hunters. Oh, <coughs> is there? They're here for weather to be found. In Weatherstone. What's a Weatherstone? This is Weatherstone. Hmm. Oh, okay. This is Weatherstone. And you're not the first to be here. Uh, Esgar and his his group they headed in this morning. Hmm. 
But uh, they there. all are seeking, all seeking the treasures of Alagorod. Alagorod was king in this part of Ravenland for a long time, ruled from here, long before the mist fell. And rumors... This girl has a notebook out. She's <laughs> <laughs> Rumors of the treasures never leaving Weatherstone have, I'm surprised more have not come. I've enjoyed myself here in the Watchtower. Giving people the meals as they head in. How come you haven't gone in yourself? I am not a treasure hunter. Why does the treasure never leave? Is it guarded? I don't know. I've yet to speak to anybody that has left yet. I was going to say, have any of the treasure hunters come out? (laughs) Some, Some have come in, never come out. Some have stayed. I've heard people talk of Algrod may not be gone. That maybe, maybe the the dead lie an eternal life in there. I'm sure well, Weatherstone is dangerous, but you, the four of you, I assume you're treasure hunters. Of a sort, We're not, explorers not mostly, as but, such. Uh, but uh, we wouldn't discount tales of the dead walking, for indeed we have seen such things of late. You've been to the hollows. That we have. How is the Hollows? Mad. It seemed a little... <laughs> Does that bald dwarf still make the beer? He's quite good at it. Oh. It is, I will tell you, the best in all of Ravenland. You seem to know a lot it. about the local areas. Is there any other towns we should know about nearby? I can tell long tales. Sit. Relax. Eat. Have we gotten a better look at this guy yet now that we're kind of coming in and yeah, so gathering around? Settle settled head? down. Um, he's a human. Um, probably the best way to describe Dalb is beautiful. This is a beautiful man. He's slender. Um, he hasn't stood yet, but as best as you can tell, he's, he's likely over six foot tall. Uh, the clothes are are nice clothes. Um, something that maybe some people in Oak and Heart would have for special occasions. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, s- sewn with, with, with delicate and lace. He um, is very smooth, uh, both in his movements and his language. is uh, almost melodic, the way that he talks. But then you get a glint, Sten. As uh, she's kind of, you know, eating the rabbit, hearing tales and talk about the treasure hunters and stuff. And it's it's funny because, I mean, you've been looking at Dolph this entire time. But then you, you see it and it's a hint. His eyes are yellow. Mm. And as so you lock eyes with just him. Just kind of stand, sit up straight for a second. And, and, you, and you, you lean in to make sure maybe it was, you know, maybe it was a glint mm-hmm. or something like that. We see the camera kind of Stan is very focused on this and looks and the camera goes in mm-hmm. and we see a very bright yellow eyes as he continues talking and the camera fades to black. Mm. <laughs> Let's go ahead and quickly run the credits. And when we come back, we'll do some recap and some experience. Mm. Huh.
<laughs> All right, welcome back. So let's quickly do some experience and then we got a lot of chatting to do. Um, uh, first, all right, so everybody get your sheets out and let's start marking. I'll read these off and you mark as we go. Everybody ready? Yep. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. Did you participate in a game session? You did. Yes. Everybody yeah. gets an XP. All right. Did you travel th through at least one hex on the game map that you had we not sure did. before? <laughs> yes, you did. Yeah. Let's go ahead and mark that for a second XP. Did you discover a new adventure site? <laughs> Welcome to Weatherstone. That's a third <laughs> XP. Look at this go. Did you defeat one or more monsters? You did not. Did you find a treasure of one gold or more? Uh, yes, you did. Oh, mm -hmm. oh the circle. The circle. Yeah. Oh, circle. yeah. Uh, did you so build that, a function to your stronghold? No. Did you activate your pride? No. Anybody suffer from their dark secret? Uh, no. No, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, did anybody risk their life for another PC? We were willing. We were willing to do. Oh, for another PC. Hmm. No, for an NPC, but not for a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, none of us had to like dive in after you guys yeah. in the river, so I yeah. would say no. Okay. Um, um, and did any of you perform an extraordinary action of some kind? I mean, mm. I, I almost feel like Vasily should get a point for the the amazing the plan. cemetery plan. I like that. I think I agree. I think the I, I like definitely to reward deserved. cleverness. Yep. No, I agree. I think there should, definitely should be an XP reward for that. It was, um, and it really, it was her doing, but I thought that all of you did a really neat, neat way of handling that. I found, I found you not walking away. Very believable. Like, like it, it just, it made sense to me that you would, would not just let him fend for himself um, after that kindness Love the role playing uh, that went back from it. Uh, one of our best, better sessions. I think that as as a as a cast, I think this was one of our better sessions. I feel like everybody's starting to feel the skin uh, of their characters a little bit. I feel the characters coming off the character sheets a little bit more and kind of becoming more than just you know Osric the fighter, right? And starting to become Osric and Sten um, and everybody. So uh, well done to all of you. Um, real quick, uh, Aloy, highlights. I like that we role played the thing with the dwarf. I, I it felt honest that we'd go back and and help him out. So I, I like that we did that. Uh, the interaction with the horse and the stag were very atmospheric, so that was pretty cool. Uh, the Rust Brother was really scary. So it's like we didn't have to do much, but we're like, uh oh, this is not good. Yeah, all he had to uh, do was like waggle his finger, and we were all like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the plan, the plan with the cemetery was amazing. It was a stroke of genius. I wouldn't have, it never even crossed my mind. I wouldn't uh, have either. Like as soon as no, that no, came out, like, I was like, oh, that's really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, what else? The pilgrims were interesting glimpse of this world. Uh, and I like the mystery of, of the horse, the war horse with the La Vida thing. And now talking to this uh, minstrel who seems to be the stag and the introduction of the, of the castle, which looks pretty cool. So all of that was good. I mean, it, all of it was good. It was a good session. There's things good. that stand out in my mind, right? You know. We handled the crossing well, the rope. It was so, but those are the things that sort of popped out. So, me. Nate, uh, based off of what you saw the the rest of the cast do, is there anything that you learned about the other characters that you didn't know before? Hmm. Is there anything you're picking up about the the character development you're seeing in the rest of the cast, or something maybe you're enjoying seeing? I'm, I'm liking the way the relationships are starting to build and it's just kind of, it's continuing to grow. Like we, we all have our own, you know, interpersonal relationships that I think will develop more interestingly. Yeah. Yeah. Fox, do we have any theories about what the hell's happening right now? Um, I don't know that, that I don't think Vasilla has any theories. I, I can already tell you Vasilla is completely enchanted with Dolb. <laughs> going to be bad um because <laughs> he's clearly not words. what he's, yeah clearly not what he says he is but um 
it's it's all set up for this very impressionable young 18 year old minstrel to just be head over heels instantly and um you know she may have had like a little little like half crush on on aldrich but here we are like the guy is like, I'm old news. So, <laughs> this is like so, the rubber meets yeah, like, the road man this is like, right like, like you know priscilla has gone so, to college yeah. <laughs> high school sweetheart <laughs> Aldrich's so the is, nice boy next um, door. <laughs> but but for I think for her especially, like this this concept of we're seeing more and now we're getting like history and lore and all these things that she can use to to kind of like grow her profession is exciting to her. So that's you know, she's she is wrapped up in this right now, which is um probably good because the the plan was really good for her and, and and it really like you know that was kind of her her shining moment this time but all i think the the consequences of that plan are going to weigh on her just a little bit like yeah she knows she she fed these guys to these zombies like <laughs> and, and and it's going to weigh on her so so having this suddenly this extra thing to like drag her away from that moment of of darkness into like here's something really cool is going to be good i think yeah. Um, so, Brian, you're a forever GM, much like I am. Um, I would be curious if you encountered a group of people who love D&D, right? They just that's all they've ever done. That's all they've ever played. Um, how would you make the case that they should try this? Um, so if people are watching and they are lovers of D&D, what do you think somebody who's only ever played D&D would would enjoy about the system you know i was actually thinking about this because um you know i've been thinking about running a, a smaller campaign lately um using blades in the dark which is another system that i know you're very familiar with yep and one of the things i really like about that which i also like about uh, forbidden lands is that in D D, you more or less know what is what the possibility space of the game is like. I mean, if you encounter a troll, you more or less know what a troll is going to do. And you know that there are probably dragons out there somewhere. And you know that wizards can cast magic missiles and then fireballs. Um, whereas with something like this, I, I like, I have no idea what Aldrich is capable of. I have no <laughs> idea what the possibilities are that Dalb might be. Yeah. Um, so basically everything is just kind of like, uh, you know, in character, it's sort of like, huh, I have no idea what's going on here. And as a jaded old fart of a role player, that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. It, um, it, it, it that's what set my hooks was the, the it's hard to find an unknown fantasy mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. um, now, the other one that comes out of Free League Saborum is also has some of this. Um, and I know that they just had a huge successful kickstarter because they've got uh or simber rules for it yes simber i don't know Simbrum. Yeah, Simbrum. yes so simber so they, they it's got its own mechanics which i've read and, and it's really it's a clever game it's not the year zero so it's different than this um but it's got some very clever mechanics wonderful lore uh but uh yeah they did they for those people that play 5e um and uh i know nick bought it um and i have a feeling that i'm just gonna end up buckling even though yeah all the Craig Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say I have a question because you've run this off camera, yeah, before, right? And you're running it now. Um, and I know like there's a sense of mystery for us because we've never played it, we've never seen it, we've never experienced it. As a game master, are you finding that the experiences are different enough that that like you know kind of what's going on? I is there still some like interesting mystery for you? It is, I, I, the prep is so easy. I mean, I, what, what's key for me is that I've read the books, right? And when I got to the point where I feel comfortable with the world and I've read all of the random encounters at least once so that when, if they come up, they're not the first time I've read them. And uh, as you guys were working towards Weatherstone, I've read Weather, Weatherstone several times. But much like the Hollows, Weatherstone is a sandbox just as much as the Hollows is a sandbox, which I've just, it's super exciting. So to answer your question, Fox, I have no idea what the hell is going to happen. The way you guys handled the Hollows, very different than my in-person group did. Um, and that's awesome. So I felt like I was playing the Hollows for the first time and running the Hollows for the first time. 
um, which I think is really, really neat. And, you know, they have left the hollows as you have, but they've left a very different hollows than you have, <laughs> um, which is cool, which is really, really cool uh, to me. Um, so, yeah, I, it's I think that um, when I'm talking to GMs, one of the first things I tell them is I feel like I get to play. Like, I feel like, you know, I am seeing the world unfold in front of me. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, I can't railroad you because there's no railroad to even try to put you on. Um, and I have never, until I met this system, never been a big sandbox person. Just, I've never liked the concept of it. I have found it tedious. Um, I have found it aimless. And every time I've tried to run a sandbox long, long times ago when I was running GURPS Fantasy, uh, I ended up just all right, we're just going to do an adventure. <laughs> like here's, uh -huh. here's the plot, right? We're not going right. to do this, but I love this. I love this world. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, and, and I love the flexibility I get as a GM um, uh, real quick uh, for those of you watching uh, you've heard me talk about Nick a few times. Nick is off camera, but Nick uh, has been our secret GM tonight. Um, did an amazing job running the stream. So uh, Nick, thank you so much um, awesome. for doing thank it. You. It's a lot of hard work uh, and it, it'll freeze me up and it allows me to be more of a GM versus a producer. So it's very appreciative. I also want to thank uh, everybody that was inside um, and talking. Uh, we have some good chats going on for those of you that watch live. Um, if you are watching this on YouTube, make sure you jump over to Twitch and follow us on Twitch. So, you know, when we're doing it live, we have some great conversations um, happening. Also the podcast if you're not a listener of the podcast that's how third floor wars started is the, the tabletop talk podcast you can get it on all the podcatchers we've got an interview with Alyssa Mental, the artist who has done art for a lot of different uh board games and miniature games like weird uh for weird games uh insanely talented in fact uh one of her games that she worked on just went up on kickstarter um here called uh Keystone, Keystone. To, yeah North America I could not have backed it fast enough <laughs> um and in two weeks the people that uh Rose Gauntlet the founder of Rose Gauntlet that's releasing the game they are uh they're going to be guests on the podcast as well um so if you're watching on Twitch follow if you're watching on YouTube uh go ahead and give us a subscribe and thanks to the cast I appreciate everybody coming